Bauman made some changes in the offseason. He is now in a Howerton chassis, still on the Parks Plus entry, number three. Scotty, this is a completely rebuilt bike from the ground up. When you look at the carbon, it's completely reshaped. When you look at the throttle cable, that's a new thing for Breyer this season. And he's back on a linkage chassis, which he is just way more comfortable on. Yeah, and I think he likes the responsiveness of the throttle cable with more than he had last year. You know, nothing against what was going on last year. It just it was time for a change, and they made a skinnier bike, a skinnier and taller motorcycle for Breyer. Absolutely, and that just kind of fits Breyer's frame, but something, Scotty, that we've talked about uh, in years past at the Daytona Short Track, this track suits a taller rider and a heavier bike. Yeah, I think you can really, you know, use that body, position yourself on the motorcycle, throw it further sideways to slow down, and then you can also, since you're taller, you can slide back on the seat to get the traction over the rear wheel. A little bit better than the smaller guys. So, Scotty, this is the first practice session of the day. They did have a practice session yesterday, and uh, being able to see these bikes out on track have a real shakedown of what they're capable of. Usually we talk about the season opener being a good gauge for where riders are coming into the season at, but... The Daytona short track can be deceiving. It's it's a lot of a crapshoot. I mean, a lot of riders out of nowhere can win this race. And that guy right there, the number one rider in the country, he has never won here. So it, it, it is the season opener. It is a little bit different than the rest of the tracks we go to. I mean, Scotty, the 32 and the 1 perfectly poised. The title card for tonight's race, absolutely, with Dallas Daniels taking both wins, sweeping last season's doubleheader opener here at the Daytona short track. But after speaking with Jared, you mentioned this is one track of the five on the circuit that we are visiting this season that he has not won on, but he wants this one bad. And he's tried here so many times. He's won over inside Daytona National mm -hmm. Speedway as a TT. But, but never on the short track. Exactly. So it took a, a lot of racers a lot of time to win here. It's getting a hold of this dirt. The dirt has changed a lot since we first started coming here. It was wider. It's getting a little bit darker. I don't know if it's just because it's sitting you know, out so much. I love what Jared Meese said the other day on Instagram, Dale Earnhardt had never won the Daytona 500 until he <laughs> did. And I think that was Jared's uh, battle cry going into maybe the first race of the season this year. And right? that's a good way to think about it. I yeah. mean, it doesn't happen until it does. So that was group number one of the Mission Super Twins. There are 24. And here's a new rider in the class. It is Max Killer Whale from mm -hmm. Australia. He'll be riding the latest motors, Harley Davidson. Yeah, and I, I talked in extent to Max Whale about this transition to the Super Twins class. And he seems confident and comfortable and I was surprised because in the singles class last year was a struggle but for him to be in a position now where he's healthy coming into a season he said I know I put in the work this off season it's going to pay off I'm really excited to see how Max will uh, adjust to this class and where we find him I think it'll be good for him he's a taller rider I think those singles are smaller bikes less horsepower than these big his bikes. genetics fit this bike better correct I think once he gets the hang of it he gets used to that Harley Davidson power I mm -hmm. think he's gonna do just fine there's a lot of new bikes we're going to talk about this season. This is one of the stories we'll be keeping an eye on. The number 18 right here in the Mission Super Twins. And you know, Scotty, whenever we visit the Daytona short track, something riders have told me, it's not so much about setup. It's not so much about the bike. It is about the rider here. It's about the finesse. And I mean, we see these guys getting, are, should they be that close in qualifying? What are we doing out there? It is just practice, but you know, they had a whole day yesterday. So now it's time to see if you can pass the rider in front of you. What's going to happen if you go in low as opposed to going in high? You know, you might as well try to see if you can learn how to pass right now. That's a good point, Scotty, because you know, the strategy out there, the chess work, I mean, this is like they're playing high-speed chess. Exactly. And, you know, you're, you're trying to learn at the same time. You know, it's a new motorcycle for the 18 guy and, you know, Max Whale. And it's also, you know, Mitch Harvard right here on a 22. He's on a new team as well. So they're, they're learning every time they go out there. There's no other track just like this anywhere. And there's another new rider right there in this Super Twins class. That's the 21 Trevor Bruner. He has rode for the Turner Honda team. He has rode for the Essence and Yamaha team. And now he's hooked up with Dave Zanotti, Michelle DeSalvo. And he's got SNS helping him out on this KTM. That's a brand new bike as well, built specifically for the 21 rider. He has a great team behind him. Briar Bauman won both of his Super Twins championships with Michelle DeSalvo wrenching for him. Now to be on that bike, I mean, Trevor Bruner is inheriting, I mean, great amenities with that team and, and a really strong setup going into races like this because they can rely on, you know, some of the practicality notes that they have. Maybe not so much setup because the bikes were different, but at least the practicality and the experience, they can rely on Michelle DeSalvo and Dave Zanotti for that. It's been a a very mild winter that allowed Trevor to go up to Wisconsin and get some testing in on the short track they have right there at SNS. 
That was his first laps on, on a twin. He's raced one, a twin one time before, so he is up there looking He's pretty top solid. He's 10 on the boards right now, so that is not a bad place to be for only the second session of the day. And I want to point out the font uh, and the same number of the 21 was exactly the same font that Will Davis ran, and he called Will Davis' son, Cole Davis, and asked him for permission uh -huh. to run that same font and the same number 21. So he's honoring Will Davis with that number and that font. And that's the thing about Flat Track. There is a respect of the heritage that has created Flat Track and the communities before it. You see so many riders give homage at some point in the season or another to riders they looked up to coming up. And you even see that kind of respect that Dallas Daniels always paid Jared Meese before even entering the class. But it's interesting now, the two head to head. And Dan Bromley, you mentioned, Scotty. The, the Honda just pulled in the pit area, just went through tech inspection. And Dan Bromley on that Honda gets all the way up to fourth or fifth. So that's pretty impressive. They were working on the wiring harness in the truck on the way to the track, and it just it just showed up, and it is here. So Dan Bromley will be on one of the Hondas, and Morgan Mishra will be on the other Honda. So it's going to be exciting. Another new brand. And we want to welcome everyone on Flow Sports and on Flow Racing. We're so excited to have them as partners this year with the American Flat Track Series. You can stream all the races live all season long on Flow Sports, on Flow Racing. Download the app. Get in there because you don't want to miss a minute, not a lap of this action. It's going to be exciting. It's in this this short track to kick off the season, it's a fist fight in a phone booth. Anybody can <laughs> win. You got to go in there. You got to get physical. You got to get aggressive. Scotty, since 1954, the Grand National Championship has been displaying the heroics of this sport and we when we say that they are truly going to battle tonight the composition of this dirt alone i mean it can feel like bullets at times when the roost hits you and some of these riders putting cardboard underneath their leathers just to protect themselves all the radiators have radiator guards on them and as we look down to the track the build train race ladies out on track right now getting a few laps in and I mean, what an amazing program for these women to be a part of, Scotty. Yeah, they're doing an excellent job with these Royal Infields INT 650s. Then they make it their own. They put their own different spin on it. They got some of them use different gas tanks. Some Obviously, you can see the different colors right here on Shasta LaRue. She's a racer that uh, grew up racing in Colorado, and, and she did very well last season. She feels more confident. She's looking for her first win in this class. So they'll be in between our Mission Super Twins and our AFT singles here today. And, you know, I love the message that this class sent women at home it really is what it stands for build train race these women are learning how to build these bikes out they are training together and then they get to go race which is the exciting part I remember Anna banana last year had a full fan section at some of the races and the families really get behind it the paddock gets behind it the pro riders get behind it it is just such a cool showcase of, of what the Royal Enfield program is doing for women in our sport and, and then they have Johnny Lewis in the super twins class he'll be That's on the right. number 10 so he's in their corner Scott Baker which is Brad Baker brother he's helping out in the pit area so they come in they talk things over I talked to uh, Shasta LaRue earlier today she said every time they went out they made one change at a time and that's what yesterday allowed all the teams to do not only the Royal Enfield build train race but you make you know one change and you can see if that went better or worse then you can change back as the 17 well, right there of Kinsey Luker goes by she was very fast last season and she's fastest so far right now and Scotty for a lot of these women they don't know necessarily yet what they like in a bike so small changes at a time allow them to create feel for the changes that they're making and then it allows them to build out the vocabulary to describe to their mechanics this is what I want more of from my bike and this is the change that will get me there so they're learning together it's just I mean such a cooperative experience for that entire Royal Enfield team yeah and I watched them yesterday you know working making changes on their own motorcycles too yes yeah. there's some mechanics over there that help out but these ladies go down there and they do it they themselves they are so impressive yeah We've I got mean We've heroes got, out there. We have about half the field is new from last year and half right. the field has left that are, that are stuck around for the for next season. They've limited it now to just two seasons. Yeah. So it opens up the door for more ladies to get involved. And I mean, when you talk about what these ladies have accomplished even outside of racing. These women are athletes. They're training and uh, getting ready for this exciting season opener. Of course, we'll see the Royal Enfield ladies later this season as well at a few of our stops. And uh, whenever they're here, it's a little more fun in the paddock. It is exciting <laughs> for sure. They're parked right at the entrance to the racetrack. So we'll have an open paddock area for the fans. All the fans that paid to get in today at 6 o'clock, they can come down to you know walk around the pits and meet these ladies up close and personal. There's also a new fan experience that I'd like to talk about. They're debuting it here. They get to go onto the racetrack. Brian Smith will take them around the track, take them right down there to so the victory podium. So people are paying podium. to hang out with Brian Smith? Yeah, he said it was because I wasn't available. But oh, that's why. Anyway, Scotty so was just booked. They could go. 
They can go to the start finish line. They can take their picture on the. Or you could get roosted yeah. by Cody Cop, who is about ready to head out on track. And what an off season! What a turbulent off season for Cody Cop after the departure, the abrupt departure of the KTM manufacturer. Cody Cop had to rally and get the support that he needed to get out here and go racing, but now he is on a Rick Ware Racing backed privateer effort, and uh, that only came together just last week. But Cody Cop yesterday, just during the free practices, uh, was turning some heads out there, almost a tenth of a second quicker than anyone else on the track yesterday. You know, I think I think he has something to prove. Yes, the factory Red Bull KTM team is gone. That doesn't mean that he doesn't still deserve that number one Maybe play. Maybe a chip on your shoulder, right? Yeah, I think he has something to prove. And he has several goals. We've talked about this throughout the offseason, Kristen. Three he, big records he wants to break. Correct. He wants to be the all-time winningest safety singles rider. There's Tom, yeah, there's Tom Drain, who was very impressive last year on that 59. He's chasing Chase Sadoff, who's on a new team as well. It looks as though Tom Drain may be dancing around a little bit. He comes from road racing. He has great experience at some of these short tracks and the miles, and he's always been impressive on the miles, but now the question is, can he figure out these short tracks? And of all the short tracks to figure out, Daytona keeps people guessing, doesn't Look at it, that. Scotty? Yeah, it sure does. Chase Sadoff just goes by the one of Cody Cop, so Sadoff goes to the lead on the racetrack and the lead of the leaderboard, 18.143. That is a blistering fast lap for the 88 of Chase Sadoff. And if we were talking about Cop, he wants to win his third consecutive championship. Nobody's done that in AFT singles. He also wants to get the most wins in the season. He got close last year. He did. Now, speaking of Chase Sadoff, he has had an interesting turnaround. He's working again with Brian Bigelow this year, but they are not with the American Honda team. Instead, they're with the JPG trucking team this year, but he brought by Brian Bigelow with him, and uh, he's still uh, on the same team as Morgan Mishler, who's a veteran rider that he can rely on for information. And anyway, so looking at what changes he's undergone this off season. I mean, Chase Sadoff is really in a good position, and I think he's coming back hungry because last year the big story was winless on the season. For Chase Sadoff, I mean, he may be coming back and surprise us. You know what? And maybe it's less pressure from being on that great big team. You got all yeah. the eyeballs focused on you. Maybe that's what he needs. Maybe he needs that off of his shoulders. He doesn't have to worry about that. So we'll just have to see how his season unfolds. He's still looking for his first win in our AFT singles class. And, and it could come here, right here tonight as he is fastest so far with a 18.143. Cody Kopp is second. That's Dalton Gauthier right now in a the 79. A former winner on this track. Yeah, and he does very good here at this short track. He's not sure if he's going to run the whole season or not but uh, it depends on how these first three rounds go. They are trying to figure out the funding here, and uh, I spoke in extent with Robbie Bobby yesterday, something that we'll be able to catch a little later in this show, but uh, they are, the, the word for them this year is fun. They want to have fun. The last few years, they have been not having as much fun, so for Dalton, he just wants to go out there, do what he does best. Former champion in the singles class, looking to reclaim his former glory there. You know, sometimes you forget that you went racing because it's fun. Sometimes it becomes into a business, so you have to get focused on it try to have some fun go out there go fast as soon as you can look at these fast guys out there the singles riders are out there on the racetrack right now trying to see what they can do they're got the cameras on the 91 of justin jones here comes a 55 up the inside tyler raggio really trying to see if he can pass somebody these guys are looking for opportunities. They're looking for race lines. They're trying to figure out setup on their bike. Yes, but again, this isn't a setup. This isn't a setup track. This is a finesse track. So, trying to experiment with racing lines. So smart to use their time right now in these untimed sessions to go out there, explore lines, figure out where you can maybe make passes, figure out what the track is doing too, because it's going to continue to change throughout the night. But for the most part, this short track, they like to run down near the yellow line. Yeah, they'll keep it on the bottom. Some rubber will start going down here pretty soon. There was an amateur race here on Saturday, on Tuesday, and there was a lot of rubber on the racetrack. There was also a lot more classes, a lot more riders, but right now it's, it's, it's fast and tacky, but they're still trying to keep it on the bottom. There's a little bit of a cushion. So they're going in a little bit higher. They're kind of squaring off the corner. Really turn that motorcycle with a throttle. Slide your rear end over that back tire to get the traction to take them down the next straightaway. You know, I spoke with Sammy Halbert earlier in the day, a super twins rider. He's won four times here. Um, and he was explaining to me that being a smaller rider here is certainly a disadvantage. He doesn't move around on the bike as much, but these taller riders who have more length and extension will move further back on the bike. They'll move forward, and you'll see their body posture kind of change entering the corner. And that's something I enjoy following. I mean, even looking at the 91 here, where they're putting their feet down, where they're finding kind of grip on the track, all of these little nuances when 
all they all come into play on the Daytona short track. And you talk about sliding forward. I've talked about sliding back to get the traction. Well, when you slide forward, it's going into the corner. That puts the weight on the front tire and front wheel, the handlebars, and that you can steer it with the front end, and then you slide back, and then you steer it with the rear end coming off the corner. Yeah, and there's just so many storylines in this singles class as this uh, practice session pulls off here. A lot of new riders, and that's exciting this season to see some riders making their debut in the singles class. Scotty, who is your pick for Rookie of the Year in this class? I know it, it's early on, but I love asking it, that it's question. It's going to be very tough. You know, Evan Renshaw has all the momentum. You know, he did get hurt at the end of the, the, his last amateur season last year, but he is now picked up and riding for the Turner Honda team. He'll be coming out in this next group. There he is right there. He's on that Turner Honda. He is very tall, which would be good here. It might hurt him on the miles, but he is, you know, he won the, the Nikki Hayden Horizon Award last year. He AMA got the AMA. Year. Yeah, and that's incredible for a 15-year-old, now 60-year-old rider. If the pressure doesn't get to him, I think that will be the rookie of the year. And that's the thing. How do they manage pressure, making that jump from the amateurs up to the pro class? But I spoke with Mike Turner yesterday, and he told me of all the riders that he could choose to build out his roster, what he really liked about Evan Renshaw, he was 16 years old. He's young. He just got his AMA license. He wants a rider that they can mold and build around this program, someone who will be there for the long haul. So Evan Renshaw's your guy if that's what you're looking for as a team manager. There you go. There's a lot of new faces out here in this singles class. The 121 went by Jacob Cassio. He's raced with us for a while. 131, Evan Kelleher went very well yesterday. There's another one, 175 from Castle Rock, Washington, TJ Welty. And there we go to the 265, Evan Renshaw. What he doesn't know he doesn't know, so yeah. it won't hurt him. He also has, you know, Corey Texter has kind of helped him through the ranks. He used to be number 65 as an amateur. Now he's 265. I think he's going to have a great season. Corey Texter has been his rider coach for the last eight years. And to think that for that that extent of time, you've had someone like Corey Texter in your corner, who's a former production twins champion, who is, I mean, ingrained in the sport. You know, I, I think he has a lot to offer us. And I think Evan Renshaw, along with Corey Texter, will be interesting to follow this season and how they both develop as a rider coach and as a rider. Yeah, it's going to be interesting for sure. They're on the racetrack right now. We're keeping an eye on the 265, just going into turn number one. There's the 175 of Welty right behind them. There's the 90 of Brandon Newman from New York. And get some new numbers we'll have in this uh, next couple of other groups. But the 110, Dominic DiMario just turning pro. Reese Podorf. The 106 was fast yesterday. He's currently 21st right now in this free practice session. You know, looking at the total leaderboard, Chase Sadoff still in that number one spot. I don't know if going into the Daytona short track, I could have predicted that. I get it. It's first practice. It's a little premature. But I think Chase Sadoff has something to, to prove. We talk about riders coming back with maybe a chip on their shoulder. One and two right now, both have something to prove this season, and they're racing like it. Absolutely. Travis Petten, who got faster as the season went on last year, California rider number 82, currently sitting in the third spot. Aiden Rusev is the 26th is fourth, and Trent Lowe is the other member of the Turner Honda team, the 48 bike. Right now, he is fifth. Oh, look at Renshaw making a couple of passes right there. Going He's into getting one. dicey. He's starting to slice and dice a little early on, but I love that. What does that show me? Confidence. Yeah, and go in there and try to and see if the see if the pass is going to work. See if, if that's a line you can take later on. Now is the time to learn what you can do. And getting used to leading the charge is no different than racehorses. You want to be leading the field, even in practice. It's a mental, it's mental coaching. You're mentally conditioning yourself. Evan Renshaw really putting himself in position to make a statement here at the Daytona Short Track. Renshaw, he finishes up 15th in this free practice session, the 265 with a 18.757. It is Chase Sadoff who is in that first round with a 18.143. Fastest so far here in practice. That was your... AFT Singles Class, Parts Unlimited, AFT Singles presented by Kicker Performance Audio. We're glad to have Kicker back on board with us and Parts Unlimited as well. Yeah, I saw Lauren last night, and it's always so good to see the Kicker Audio family. They're great people, and it's a great product. I've, I mean, I've gone through a few bullfrogs. So I keep one out in the garage for when I'm working out. I keep one out in the garden when I'm doing gardening. And then we used to put one on the boat, and it's like, you can drop one of those in the water, pick it back up, and it's still playing music. Kicker makes an unbelievable product. It is awesome. So first round of practice is done. When we come back, we'll have another round of practice from right here, the World Center of Racing. This is the Royal Enfield Short Track at Daytona.
Back to the Royal Enfield Short Track at Daytona. We're just outside Turn Number 1 of Daytona International Speedway. Getting set to go with our second round of practice here at the Short Track. We've seen all three classes on the track. Mission Super Twins. We had the Royal Enfield Build Train Race Program. And just now pulling off the racetrack is the Parts Limited AFT Singles presented by Kicker. They've already had one round of practice, Kristen. And they had practice yesterday as well, Scotty. And welcome back to everyone on Flow Racing and Flow Sports. To everyone watching at home, you can catch the entire season on Flow Racing and Flow Sports, which is really exciting. So if you're at home, no more watching on your computer. You can download the app to Apple TV. You can watch the whole season on the big screen at home. And uh, that's pretty exciting for our fans. A great opportunity to follow all the racing live all season long in its best format possible. Of course, you can also catch the races a little later on Fox Sports 1 as well. Scotty, the season opener here at the Daytona Short Track. For you, what does the season opener mean? It's it's like the first day of school. It's like, welcome back. Let's go see our friends, our flat track family we haven't seen since Springfield. It's Let's go see what the new bikes look like. Let's go see who's teamed up with who. What did we miss in the off season? It's like, let's go. I'm ready for the season <laughs> to get started. So there's a lot you take in down a here at Daytona. A lot of storylines, too. For you, what is the biggest team change that you're excited Excited about following this uh, this new season. I, I, I'm curious to see, you know, the departure with Briar leaving Zanotti and mm -hmm. DeSalvo moving over to what he's got with Howerton, Howerton building built chassis. Yeah. And then at the same time, I'm interested to see how Trevor Bruner, the 21, moves into the Super Twins class and works with Dave Zanotti and Michelle DeSalvo, a proven championship winning team. Right. And they've also won races last year. So I'm, were, I'm, I want to watch both of those stories. There were a lot of questions surrounding kind of that move this off season and how it it would play out for these uh, athletes and I mean just a ton of team changes at that Scotty when we talk about the essence and racing Yamaha team downsizing they went from a four rider team to a two rider team they JD Beach racing over <laughs> across the way actually this week in, in the Moto America series and Dallas Daniels taking ownership of that team and I'm really curious to see what happens now without JD? Because JD was a major player on that team, even more than the competitive side. He was a great rider coach to Dallas. And I think that the two fed off each other very well. They had a cooperative relationship. So now Dallas Daniels is in a position where he has to be the team captain. He is leading the the Essence and Racing Yamaha team. And um, that'll be an interesting storyline to follow this season. No matter what, Dallas Daniels is, you know, capable of anything. He 15 times on the podium last season five wins in any other season that would be a championship clinching season but yeah, that not was, when you're racing jared Mees. that was a great season i mean i would i would love to have that season i think anybody in the pit area would love to have that season and just comes up a little bit short to now nine-time champ jared Mees. scotty when you think of the standouts in this sport scotty parker comes to mind mm -hmm. and now jared Mees in the same sentence did you expect that when you i mean you've seen jared Mees race from the time he was amateurs to now yeah i i didn't I, at, the, at the start, you don't think he's going to make it that far. You just never know. Scotty Park, 94 wins and nine championships isn't a lot. Jared Meese can catch Chris Carr this season, and Chris Carr was an awesome seven-time champion. Jared's passing in championships. He's possibly going to catch him in wins this season. He's got Jared has 72. Chris Carr has 78. So he can ca possibly catch him and even pass Chris Carr. But looking back, you know, just watching Jared get better and better – what I like about Jared is his focus. It doesn't seem like anything disturbs him at all. He, he could be having a baby. He got married in mm -hmm. opening ceremonies. He is a promoter <laughs> of Lima and Springfield. Yeah. It doesn't bother him. Uh, I don't know how he can tune everything out. We talk about the changes this year. Well, what stayed the same? Jared Mees. He kept the same crew behind him. Kenny, Bubba, all these guys that have worked with him for 10 plus years. It's a formula that has worked for Jared. It is proven. So why change anything if it's not broken? So for Jared Mees, I mean, to watch what they've done. Oh, there's, there's the guys the right now. Sammy Sweet is right there on the left. <laughs> Bubba Bentley on the right. And they're and watching Flow Racing. They're watching, watching Flow us. Sports on the phone right now. They're listening to what we're doing out they there. They have a couple of different bikes over there. They have what they they're do. calling a smaller bike. Mm -hmm. They have the, the A, B, and C baby. And I don't know which one he's hopping on. It's probably his little secret, but so he's he bringing out me his best animal. A, a and B are racing here today. He said A and B are very similar. He said C is not similar. Hopefully, we won't have to see C out there on track, but I'm, a C I'm, is very different. I'm going to guess C is the one in the middle right there without a tail section, unless they're already making changes because it's already got white tires. So it has 
has been on yeah, the racetrack. Yeah, so C is actually the, the teeny little bike. Okay, so they haven't been on that one yet. They right. have not, but they're trying different things. I mean, don't think for a second just because they've won nine championships or because they've been doing this for so many years that they've become complacent. There is nobody that wants Jared Meese to win a championship more than his team behind him. These guys are trying things in between every session. I mean, the bike could be great. Jared Meese could be top five in practice, but he's still going back and making just slight, slight little adjustments to the bike. And you know what? It could be the last season for him. We don't know. He's right. teased it a little he, bit. He has told me, he said that this will likely, that is the term, quote unquote, this will likely be his last season of full-time racing in the Super Twins class. But we'll I consider see. it such a privilege to be able to witness that if that is the case. If it's not good for us, we get another season of great racing. But he has teased the idea of potentially retiring after this season. We'll see what the old man wants to do. I always give him a hard time. He's not that old. <laughs> not that old, but he's been in he's the not sport that young for a either. long time. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> there is the one of Jared Meese, the 32 Dallas Daniels, the three of Briar Bauman. And on the outside, the it looks three, like the 67 Davis Fisher. Which could very well surprise us this year and play spoiler to what we thought would be a title card match between Dallas Daniels and Jared Meese. I was so impressed with how confidently Briar has approached this season with that bike rebuild. I mean, from the ground up, we talk about them reshaping the carbon and really kind of getting this bike smaller for Briar. It's not necessarily smaller, I guess, but just reshaped. If it reminds you, it gives you Brian Smith vibes. That is because the legendary Ricky Howerton built it. Dallas Daniels, he saw somebody told him to go ahead. He jumped out in front of me. So he wants to be in front of that guy right now. They are, they are <laughs> already sending each other mental signals for this season. Remember at the end of last season when they, you know, one, uh, they would inch just closer and closer to each other. Or one tire would line up an inch in front of the other, and they were kind of playing those mental games even early on in the season. I, I mean, this is not going to be an exception. This will be a fun battle to follow all season long. So, so now look, Dallas and Jared are at the very back of the pack because they were told to come out here. They're going to get one chance to do a practice start right here. Here. During this second practice session, evidently Jared and, and uh, Dallas might have forgot about that. And uh, Briar with a little wheelie there. So Johnny Lewis in that Royal Enfield, the 10 bike. Side note, uh, Johnny's son, Maxine, turns 10 today. So a little parody there between the bike and his son turning 10. But Johnny Lewis has spent a lot of time this offseason making just little adjustments to the bike. And that's a sign of confidence. In years past, they've had to make big adjustments. I mean, every time they're going back to the pit, they're throwing everything but the kitchen sink at that bike. Now they have the bike at a place where they feel confidently in it. And maybe I spoke too soon. He's, he, down. he's looking down already. And now he's just grabbing the throttle. So uh, it's just there's a little bit of smoke coming out of the tailpipe already. And that is their primary bike. That's the new bike. So and he switched his colors now. He was the man in black. Now he's in all white. So having an issue with that one. And that's that's not good because that's your primary bike. That's what you came here to race. And he's also missing out on this practice session. You know, we've always talked about how difficult it is for those Royal Enfields to get replacement parts. So we're hoping this season that won't be as much of an issue, but not a good way to start the day for Johnny Lewis. No, definitely not as we go right here to look at the three. The Woo, he's getting a little yeah. sideways. Yeah, and, and the track is looser up there. You know, not quite as deep as Lima, but it's still looser. And you can go out there and really grab a handful and get the thing sideways. So you can see him picking his foot up, putting on the foot peg as soon as he can to transfer that weight to the rear wheel. So when you're feeling it, let's take a look at what you saw, Kristen. He's losing rear tire traction. It's kind of floating to the and outside, the fishtailing a little bit. Up. Yeah. yeah, so he did catch traction right in the middle of that, lifted mm -hmm. the front wheel up, so he checked up on the throttle to put the front end down to keep going, you know, keep, keep making that turn. So. But if anyone can kind of handle this track, it's someone like Briar. And he mentioned last year that the bike just didn't have the right torque for what we need or the power band that we need for American flat track racing. But they worked on that this offseason. He said, I'm not going to give away any secrets. Oh, and this was interesting, too. He said, I normally would tell you what we did. He said, but there are too many guys on KTM this off this season. So, wow. you know what? We made Secret. some torque changes. We made some power delivery changes. And uh, hopefully it's working for them out there. Briar has won here before back in 2014. He's also won on the inside of the Daytona National Speed way won the TT once as well. Right. An excellent TT rider. And you know, when we return, big news this year, we're going to go to Sturgis for the TT. We're back uh, and ready for that. I know you're shaking your that's head gonna there. That's going to be crazy. It's going to be crazy. I can't wait to check that out. Yeah, and that's going to be so exciting. So two races at uh, Bike Week this year in Sturgis in the Black Hills of South Dakota. And uh, I think Briar Bauman, 
you know, is my favorite for that race early on, just already, because he's so good at the TTs. Dallas Daniels will also be another favorite there. But there's some mixed feelings amongst the paddock uh, in regards to racing a TT there. But I personally am so excited about I it. I think a lot of it, Kristen, is we don't know exactly what the course is going to look like. Are, is there going to be a lot of pavement? Is there going to be a lot of dirt? Are they bringing all dirt in? You know, nobody's really announcing anything yet. No. Just like, let's build the suspense, and we'll find out when we get yeah. there. Yeah, and speaking of mixed feelings, Johnny Lewis headed back to the paddock right now. They're going to try to diagnose what's going on with that bike. And, uh, you know, really disappointing because I know speaking with him earlier, he was so confident coming into this season regarding where the bike was at and the little adjustments they were just making and uh, heading out onto the track right now, Sammy Halbert. That is one bike we're going to watch. That's an XR750 Harley Davidson riding for the Dodge Brothers. and It's a carbureted bike. Yes. I tried to say that with my boy school. voice, but <laughs> it didn't work. Maybe you could say carbureted better. Carbureted. Carbureted. The <laughs> last time an XR750 Harley Davidson won was Jeffrey Carver at Texas Motor Speedway in 2017. So it's been a while since we've seen a Harley. And that, if you think about it, that's when Indian got involved in this game. And then the Yamaha game. Came. over. And then, and then here comes the KTMs now. So it's going yeah. through a transition of different kinds, but that Harley is still competitive. Is He goes back out in front of that and 69. Sammy is still competitive. We talk about this track rewarding the bigger riders. Sammy is the exception to the rule here. He is so skilled on this track, and that's because Sammy loves these short tracks. He's short track Sammy. He's slamming Sammy. He's not afraid to get aggressive. He's also conscious of not being over aggressive. He rides the bike as though he owns it, and I just, I love watching Sammy on the short and, track. He's so fun. You nailed it, Kristen. It is aggressive. You got to manhandle that motorcycle. Go in there, put your elbows up. I mean, look move at him. People. He's all over the motorcycle, but he's going fast. He has control, though. There's a difference between being all over the motorcycle and being in control. Fastest so far, Sammy Halbert putting it top of the boards right now with an 18.317, a whole tenth of a second faster than Dallas Daniels out there. But there is a fine line between being in control and being out of control, and Sammy Halbert lives on that line. Yeah, he is right there on the edge. You know, he's been that way his entire career. Him and Jared pretty much came through the ranks together, the slammer and the jammer. And uh, we'll take a look back, and there's the 92 Brandon Price. It's good to see the Price is right back out here. And the 21 as the yellow flag was displayed for just a second. But the 21 is one I want to keep my eyes on right there. Trevor Burner, they call him Blackjack. He's just learning this motorcycle, learning the responsiveness as, as a twin. In the 69, coasting down that back straightaway, we caught it as the camera went past him, so that's not good. 20, 21 getting it sideways right there. All right, as we continue this session, let's do a rundown of the riders in the top five. Sammy Halbert, he has won here four times. Dallas Daniels, back-to-back -back winner last year for the season opener. Davis Fisher uh, up here, top three right now. Dan Bromley on a Honda that was just delivered to the track just, I mean, not even an hour ago, uh, a bike he's never ridden before. Dan Bromley really figuring things out right now. Checkered flag coming out, Kristen. It, you're talking about that Honda. How about the Sammy Halbert on the XR750 Harley out front? 18.317. Watch the reaction from his team right here on the screen. This is when he set the fast lap. That's the Dodge Brothers. Tony Dodge right there on the right. He's pretty excited about it. So it's got to feel good to be quick right here at Daytona, the World Center of Racing. The ladies are getting ready to roll onto the racetrack right now. It's the Royal Infield Build Train Race ladies, and they're getting situated. Come on out. That is the beautiful pink number 67, Shasta LaRue. She's from Colorado. She's going to pull onto the racetrack and bring the rest of the ladies with her. This will be their second round of practice. We're working our way through our program. Practice for two rounds, two rounds of qualifying for all three classes racing with us today. Open paddock area is scheduled for 6 to 6.50. You can come down here and walk through the pits and meet the riders. Opening ceremonies here tonight, 7 p.m. And then we'll get into our qualifying heat races at about 7.20 whenever opening ceremonies is done. So, so far, one round is in the books and two rounds actually for the Super Twins. You never know who's going to win, but practice kind of sets you up for the rest of the evening. Kristen Beats going outside to get some notes. So joining me in the booth is the world-famous Ralph Shaheen. Ralph, you've been walking around out there in the pit area. What have you been finding out? I've been talking to the folks on the new Honda over there. I've been chatting with Al Lamb. Yeah, how'd that go? 13 days, Scotty. That's all they've had to put those bikes together. 13 days. That's why they were a little late in getting into... Daytona and ready to go racing today. But how about after 13 days, not knowing what you have, 
the very first time it turned a wheel at all, at all, not even, they didn't even run it up and down behind the shop. The first time it turned a wheel was we saw it live here on our broadcast moments ago, and it puts itself fourth in the field. That's first time out. That's incredible. They were working on the wiring harness in the truck on the way here. Do you know that all but about 11 pieces on that motorcycle are handcrafted? Isn't that crazy? Everything but about 11 <laughs> pieces. So it's like everything but the grips. Right, right. The grips are about the only thing that are not handmade <laughs> on that motorcycle. That is just incredible. Isn't that something? All right. Here comes the ladies. Again, they're getting a little chance to get a practice start, and they're getting up to speed. We've got some new ladies racing with us. About half the field has moved on. You can only race this class for two seasons, which I think is an excellent call. That way it gets more ladies involved. So you keep, a, keep about half of them. We put half of them new out here. So we've got some new names we'll be learning out here at the Daytona Flat Track. 67, Shasta LaRue. She's going around the outside of the two. The two is Michaela Nichols. 22, Hannah Robertson. The 28, Maya Maffei. Maffei, I'm sorry, Maffei on the 28. Shasta LaRue, 67. Christina Ross is on the 8. Taya Little is on the number 11. Hannah Lang, she's from Wisconsin. She's on the 35. And Kinsey Luker, we all know her. She won some races last season. That is the 17 bike from Colorado, or California. Getting get them dialed in. I like those bright pink wheels on that 28 machine. Looks pretty good. That would have been good for you back in the day, huh? Yeah, you would have liked the, that. Me and Ronnie Jones well, had the bright Well, that era, bright, bright was the way blue. to go, exactly. right? Exactly. That was the Laurel Lake colors. I like it. The 11's looking pretty racy so far. Going to the middle. That's Taya Little, 20.919. She's getting in a little bit of traffic right here. She has those yellow leathers on. My mom would have loved Michaela's number two there with the purple wheels. Yeah, there you go. Mom, that was her favorite about color. everything purple. Oh, there you go. There she is. That's a good look at it right there. They're trying to go side by side down here in three and four. The 11 got a little sideways. I like, Ralph, that they had uh, seven rounds of practice yesterday, not only for the two premier classes, but also for the Royal Enfield class. Yeah, no doubt about it. And... Uh, I'm sure some of the riders are a little worn out from that. You, you think that doesn't sound like a lot, but it, it is. That track time will put its wear and tear on you, right? It'll definitely pay off, but also not only on you, you know, physically, but mentally. You go back there and make changes to your motorcycle, talk to those mechanics that are back there helping out, and then you got to go back, come right back on, try it again. So, and it was a bit of a long day, too, getting to the point of actually getting on the track. Correct. Absolutely. So everybody wants to win here at Daytona. And only three will win here tonight in those main events. Luker at the top spot. Now, Taya Little goes to the top spot at the last second. Taya's on the 11. The 17 is second fast. The 67 is third quick. There's the two going by. And the checkered flag is out. Big P, our flag man, back with us again this season. Sure looks like a lot of fun. Doesn't it, though? They all started out, these motorcycles all started out, out as INT 650s, and they're allowed to make some changes. And it uh, looked like they made a lot of those changes. They went all went to, uh, it looked like the Dallas, Texas area, and that's where they all got together and, and put all their bikes together the way they wanted them. And then they train, and then they race. That's right. And they literally do all of it. There is Trent Lowe on the 48s. We're switching gears going into the AFT singles, which is your parts limited AFT singles presented by Kicker. There's the 48 still on that Turner Honda team. That's a team that's gone through some changes this offseason. They're down to two riders instead of four. And they've got a new rookie rider for him, the 265. He'll be out in that last group since he doesn't have any points. They come out according to how they finished the points from last year. And they're coming out and getting a little practice start. Well, there's the champ on his new bike. Not a new brand, but a new bike. And the fact that it's now part of the Rick Ware Racing Stables. Cody Cop sporting the new Parts Plus color scheme on there. Looks good. It's exciting. It sure is. There's the 26 pulling up to the outside. He's got some new sponsorship, too. That's Aiden Roos Evans, 48 Trent Lowe. The one a cop, 59 Tom Drain. And they just put that one deal together about six days ago. So he's actually wearing uh, like a pullover over his leathers right now. And he'll have his regular leathers ready to go by the time we get to Sonoya, Georgia, with all the proper logoing on it. That's, it's funny how things come together. Last year, it was the his 
Parts Plus kind of teammate, Briar Bauman and Shane Texter are putting their team together with the last minute. Six days, what was it? 43, 43 days 43 last year, days. yeah. That's right. So it's incredible, you know. I mean, the things in the sport happen fast, and, and Rick Ware wanted to have another singles rider out there. Watch James on here, riding pretty hard, pretty fast, coming around on the outside here. And that is another team that's made some changes. They are down to one rider in the singles class. They also picked up an amateur rider in this offseason, and they announced that Tuesday. That is Jack Brooks from Nina, Wisconsin. Odd is on that 19 right in the middle here. He looks like he's riding real aggressively. And here comes the 88 sliding up the inside of the 19. That is Sadoff. Chase Sadoff on the Honda. We go back out front to the 48. Trent Lowe, a little bit of a gap. Back to 52. There's Shane at Texter Bauman, the other Parks Plus entry. Cody Kopp with the best time of an 18.437. Quickest so far. Sadoff just a thousandth behind him. The Sadoff looks comfortable on the 88. Still working with Brian Bigelow. It's a new team, and they look pretty stout already. Changed some things, but not everything, right? Correct. One, one eight point four three seven for Cody Cop and Chase set up one eight point four three eight. That is quicker than a blank separating the top two. How about Ruse Evans up there in second? Now Sadoff goes to the top spot. 18.3 flat. 18.3 for Chase Sadoff on the 88 as the white flag is displayed. One lap to go around the Scotty, Daytona flat track. You go from a thousandth down to a tenth faster. That's impressive. And I think part of that, Ralph, is he was kind of stuck in some traffic when he got no traffic in front of him. Clean air. Clean, uh, yeah, if you want to call it that. Nobody, nobody slowing him down possibly, and, and he turns that quickest lap as he's looking in, at the fans and looking at the, the big screen over there. Want to see how fast he was. But So, Scotty, it's just practice, but look at how aggressive everybody's riding here. Look at how tight these guys are going into the corners here. Sat off on the inside and odd on the outside. Man, they're right up on top of each other. And, and you have to, Ralph. I mean, it's a short track, and this is what it's going to be not, uh, like all night long. You might as well go out there and see if you can pass somebody. See if that high line's going to work, or see if that low line, you can slide in there and take that spot away. Now's the time to figure that out. So what are you telling me? We're going to start throwing elbows in here? I think so. It's, it's That's what a short track is, a fist fight in a phone booth. All right. Well, we're going to add a guest into our phone booth. Come on in, Mark. We're going to have a couple of guests coming through. We might as well get our first one in here now. That's going to be Mark Florian, the man behind Flow Racing. He's going to join us here as we get ready for our next session. How are you, buddy? Good to see you. Welcome aboard. I just wanted to see what you guys are doing back here. <laughs> so have you ever been on Flow, or is this your first time? I've been on Flow a couple times. A couple times. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's good. Yeah. So we uh, we have our box camera going on here. we got some racing action over there. So thank you, first of all, for bringing Flo to Progressive American Flat Track. We're excited to be on your air. We're excited to be here, and we're excited to be streaming this. This is awesome. This is actually my first flat track race. Yeah, and you and I were walking around earlier. We went out and took a look at the racing. I introduced you to Jared Meese and Cody Kopp. What, what have you thought so far from what you've experienced? It's awesome. It's a great experience being down there, seeing them go around those turns on that bike. Man, that's crazy. Now, with Flo... <laughs> Flow broadcasts all sorts of stuff, yeah. not just racing. There's flow racing. Yep. There's also flow wrestling and a whole bunch of other things. What yep. am I missing? Tell us about all the different things you can watch on flow. Well, just on the on the motorsports front, I know that people say that the, the people that are fans of this might not be fans of four wheels. Hopefully you check out some of the other stuff we have on, on uh, flow racing. Uh, Kyle Larson and Brad Sweet's uh, high limit series. Uh, Lucas Oil late models. We got a bunch of drag racing. We got USAC. Um, so hopefully you check out some of those other races, and we're we'll be promoting American Flat Track on those other races. But then we have wrestling, we got jujitsu, we got uh, track and field, we got a bunch of different sports out there. Jujitsu. Jujitsu. So I've never called jujitsu. Yes. Might have to look into that. Done a lot of other crazy things, but maybe jujitsu is <laughs> next. Maybe it's my pretty, future is in calling jujitsu. It's a pretty cool sport. So. Oh yeah, no doubt about it. And that's what we're about. We're about like growing up. I mean, you know, our mission is to grow. Uh, the sports we cover every day and so we're excited about getting into uh, flat track here and um, making it bigger and better watching our next category here with the uh, progressive american flat track series more parts unlimited aft singles presented by kicker this is you are so good at that two. man you are so good at that 
I've had a couple of years of practice <laughs> taking my way through it the best I can, still doing it. Yeah, it's awesome. 36th season, Mark, 36th season on uh, national TV. It's been wow. a while. Man, that's awesome. So Watch, we are going he's through. Watching Olin Kissler there on the 40 as they get the checkered flag here, bringing this session to an end. You were going to say? Yeah, I'm sorry. No, no. Educate me. What's going on here? Well, we're just working our way, just working our way through practice. Everybody getting their first taste of what the race day track is going to be like. Tyler Raggio on the 55 there. Justin Jones on the 91, all exiting the racetrack. We'll have another group coming up here shortly. We're going to go through a couple of rounds of practice, and we'll get into qualifying. Everybody, a couple of attempts at the track of qualifying, and then uh, we'll get into some heat racing a little later. Nice. And so then the the fat I hear the fastest the fastest uh, yeah talk about ironically that. there's a flow award new this year yes <laughs> funny you should bring that up so we're gonna have this year for the first time ever the flow fastest lap of the day award not of the race of the day award okay so we're gonna take a look at all the times that are laid out throughout the course of the day whether it was in practice qualifying a heat race a challenge race or a main event. Our good friends at Flow have put up 500 bucks for each of our top two classes, and we will decide who that time goes to, and they will get a $500 check from you. So, because I'm, it's my first one, and it's the first one of the year, let's make it 5,000. Serious? Yeah, why not? <laughs> Done. Is that 5,000 for each or 5,000? 5, 5,000 for each. So you're putting up 10 grand. Yes. I love it. See. I love it. What else can we do? So while we're talking about raising, <laughs> hey, listen, while we're talking about raising money, how about my fee? The TV crew is hitting me up. What do you want to do about my fee while we're here? I mean, these well, racers make a ton of money anyway. Well, it's like they're doing great. It's like it's going to be a it's a group here effort here to build the uh, to build this sport up, right? Absolutely. And part of it is they have to post on social media and get more fans to come watch. So 100. percent Let's uh, let's up it for today, and we really appreciate it. it's the beginning of the season. We want to be a, a great partner for not only American Flat Track, but we got to make sure that the, the riders are taken care of. Well, let me tell you something. You have just won yourself a whole bunch of new fans, especially all the folks in the paddock, but I'm sure all the folks that are watching right now on Flow are true fans of flat track racing, and it's wonderful to have somebody come in here and put up that kind of money for these racers who put so much on the line. Yeah, man, this is crazy the what they're out there. I mean, this is, I mean, it's pretty impressive what they do, so super exciting to be here. Well, it's only going to get better as we go throughout the season. Are we going to get to see you at any other races? Well, now I'm kind of addicted. We'll see. Well, let me suggest a few while you're at All it. All right, tell okay. me. Okay, definitely need to come to Sturgis okay. to see that. You need to go to Peoria for the TT so you can experience a TT. Illinois. Lima uh, for one of the half miles, Lima, okay. Ohio. Okay. And uh, which is Jared Meese, who I introduced you to earlier okay, cool. today. He promotes that event. All right. And then we need to get you to either Springfield or DeCoin so you can experience a mile. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, there you have it, Mark <laughs> I, Florian. I, I hear you're pretty good at picking, uh, good at picking up ice cream spots when you go to these oh, places. Oh, we do that a lot. Oh, yeah, really? We do that a lot. We don't need five thousand dollars worth of ice cream, but, <laughs> but we have our fun. Hey, but it's just it's the opening night. We got to do something fun, right? You do. You do have to have some fun while you're at it, and we greatly appreciate you doing that. Mark Florian from Flow stopping by. All right, thank we appreciate you so it. much for yeah. being a part of our series, and thank you for the ten thousand dollars. Okay, awesome. Going up for grabs for our fastest flow, fastest lap of the night we'll be getting into that so we will award that tomorrow and then tomorrow's winner will be announced at Sonoya and that's the way it's going to work as we work our way through uh, the season so it'll be a week later and our next guest making his way in who was a star on flow just a couple of weeks ago <laughs> at the pro the Skag, I got, it's been so long, Clay, I got to remember how to say it. It was the Skag, the Skag. Pro Superstar Shootout presented, presented by, by Johnson Johnson's Horsepower, Horsepower Garage. Garage. That's right. <laughs> Our good friend Clay Milliken joining us, who runs Top Fuel for Rick Ware. Good to see you, buddy. Good how are you? Good seeing you, buddy. So uh, Mark Florian just dropped $10,000 out here. You want to throw a little money in the kitty? No, I'm, I'm hey, quick. you know what? I'm putting out the parts plus the big check at opening ceremony. Yes, so you are. I'm, I'm kind of making You're, a little. You are yeah. helping out, yeah. yeah. So, of course, we have our Parts Plus Poll Award back with us again. 500 bucks for the Poll Award in each of our top two categories. And you're going to be presenting that I check. I am. I am. Awesome. You know what's really cool? What's that? So, yesterday was the beginning of 13 years with Parts Plus. For you? Yes. Holy 13 cow. years. You should have, like, a chain of stores by now. I know. I should. I'm not that smart, though. <laughs> I just like well, stomping on the fast. loud pedal. You know, I just like 
stomping on the loud pedal, making noise and going fast. But it's always a blast. Me and you have done a lot of cool stuff over the years. Yes, we have. Covered a lot of bases. It's pretty yes, cool. Yes, we have. And I got to say, when we did that drag race over in Bradenton, Florida, what was that, about three weeks ago? I Two, think so. Weeks ago? Feels like a year ago, yeah, but we yeah. Did a, we did a live on Flow. One of the things Clay did while he was there was he turned a career best lap 336 miles an hour. Man, that's a good memory. You couldn't remember the sponsors, feet. but you remembered that. Yeah, you remember I do the too. important stuff there, right? 336. <laughs> I do too. 336. And, uh, you know, that's pretty cool. You know, how it's, it's unbelievable how fast those cars go. And it's one of those things, you know, no matter how good the coverage is, it's something you've got to experience in person. Oh, Pe- yeah. People just don't understand that. So the numbers are ridiculous. Zero to 100 miles an hour in less than one second. Zero to 200 in two seconds. And zero to 300 barely over three seconds. Yeah, because you're only racing 1,000 feet, exactly. too. Exactly. I mean, the, the G-force and acceleration is what still – makes me get up every day and go i just love it what i was told once years ago is that the acceleration is equal to the launch of the space shuttle it's actually more more yeah and then pulling the chute is basically the same g-force in a negative in the chute oh yeah we don't air. like negative g's but that's about what it is <laughs> it right? is it is it's anywhere according to how, how the driver opens the parachutes but anywhere from a negative four to 11 g's negative and negative G's are bad. That's that's not, that's a, good not a good thing. That's not a good no. thing. It's one of those deals like when you hit the chute handles. I do it manually. I'm old. I do it old school. And when you hit hit the chute handles, it's kind of like if you knew I was going to punch you know punch you in the shoulder. You how you kind of squint and get ready. Yeah. That's what you do because you know it's fixing to it's going to snap snap your head a little bit. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. Let that Hans device do the work. I, I can't even imagine. I can't even imagine. Well, you've got yourself a new teammate, not on the dragster side, but on the Rick Ware Racing side. He's running the exact same colors as you, joining yeah. the Parts Plus crew. We saw him just a little bit ago. Cody Cop, now part of the deal. That's got to be pretty exciting. It really is. And I see I'm looking up here at the board. I see he's, he's in the quick. number two spot right now. Yeah. And he's a kid. I just met him for the first time earlier. I think he's 19, 19 years, years old. 19 years old, you know. Yeah. And a lot of people have asked me, you know, what's it like going to watch those guys? And, of course, Growing up in the South, I know about sprint cars. I'm like, it's it's dirt bikes that are sprint car racing. That's, yeah, here's Cody kind of, right yeah. here. Got his RWR exactly. hat on. Exactly. Young man, that's so for sure. So you getting them all up to speed on what it's like racing for Rick Ware? Oh, absolutely. You know, I was trying. They were putting fuel in the bike, and I'm like, I've got some fuel that might make it go a little faster, <laughs> but I don't think that it would pass Just tech. Just a little trickle in there. Just a little in trickle there. in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So how much nitro do you run now? Is it about 90%? 90% is maximum allowed by the NHRA rules. Our setup, we actually leave ourselves some room for if the weather gets really bad, you know, hot, whatever. If we need to add some power, we leave that so that we can. But that is a very, very strict rule. It's no different than uh, NASCAR. Don't yeah. mess with the fuel. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. They check it. As soon as we get out of the car, most of the time, as I'm literally hopping out of the dragster, they've already got a fuel line off checking it. That is yeah. one thing they stay on top of. So for Cody, if, if I was Cody right now, what's the one thing you would tell me I need to know if I'm going to race for Rick Ware? Get the whole shot. Get that's his thing. Get that whole shot. You know, if, if I mess up, which I do, you know, it's like, oh, man, we needed you to get that whole shot, you know. But uh, it's part of it. I don't think I could tell Cody nothing about going in a circle. I could just tell him <laughs> about letting go of that clutch when it's go time. The other thing I've learned about with Rick is you better be pretty good at your social media with him. Oh, absolutely. You know, that's one thing that probably not all the pro drivers do is – the social media themselves if you do any social media and you see my name on it it's me like i do my youtube i do all of it yeah i actually enjoy it which is kind of weird for a guy that's 58 years old but i can get in there and and, uh instagram with the best of them yeah you do a pretty good job of it that's for sure and you had a big launch of social media stuff when we were in bradenton you got together with little cletus and went crazy didn't it was massive we had Four million views of our top fuel dragster. And when I say four million views, it's not just a click. Like, we can look at the analytics on that. I don't know what Cletus' channel did. I know what mine did. But the average view time was around 14 minutes. And between Cletus' channel and our channel and some of our other YouTube buddies that were there, it ended up being near 4.5 million views of the Rick Ware Racing top fuel dragster. That is is just 
remarkable. It's crazy. You know, I mean, if you if you know Cletus, you know his stuff is really big, and, and it goes big every time. But we did some really fun stuff. I mean, we put the top fuel car on the dyno at his shop. Yeah. We didn't hit the throttle, but we did start up, let it run. So that was kind of cool. And then we raced one of his cars named Ruby. We did that during the week. Which, if you didn't see this, you can go back and look at it on YouTube. It's amazing because... The Corvette takes off. Ruby gets going down the strip, and then you just wait, and you think, oh, that's a fair second. enough. Yep. And, you, and you hammered it and went after him. And when you whistled past him, it shut that Corvette shut literally off. off. And this is a fast car. For those of y'all that don't follow, the car runs, it'll go high six-second quarter miles at 190-something miles Ruby an hour. Corvette. That's Ruby the Corvette. And I gave him a second-and-a-half head start. And the closing rate is incredible. Yes. You know, it just gives a really good perspective of how fast a top field dragster really yeah, is. Yeah, because when you're racing Brittany Force, for example, you're both fast. Right. It's hard to tell how hard fast you're tell. going. But you're racing, you know, a car that goes 190, which we all know 190 is fast. fast. But to, to have a car go by that goes 330, there's a big closing rate. <laughs> it yes, was sir. so, it was so crazy. I. I don't know what it felt like for, for Garrett, a.k.a. Cletus, in the car, but his in-car camera is unbelievable watching his expression when that car went by him. Well, speaking of Brittany Force and the rest of the NHRA contingent and our good friends at Fox, who we're working with here this weekend as well, all of our covers throughout the season, of course, airs on FS1. Uh, you're headed from here deeper into the center of the state because you got to go over to Gainesville. Gainesville. The Gators are up. The Gator Nationals round one. Of the Mission Foods NHRA Championship season, yes, right? Yes, indeed. The first qualifying run is tomorrow, and I'm looking forward to it. I mean, Rick allowed us to uh, add a guy named Nicky Bonifant, and if you got the last name Bonifant, you know a little bit about clutches because for, they sell all the clutches to pretty much everybody yeah, in the right whole in the Nitro place. And uh, we had him for the first time, obviously, at Bradenton. We ran a career best speed. I, number I just, one qualifier. Number one qualifier. Four well, million YouTube views. Or four, yeah, whatever. four million YouTube views. <laughs> and uh, just that far away from $250,000, you know, pulled the tires loose in the final. But what a, what a weekend that was. What a whole week, actually. And so for us, we're on a pretty good high so to speak you know we're rolling into that first race a lot of momentum a lot of momentum we really really are i, I can't wait to get out there and stomp on the loud pedal tomorrow and get ourselves in that show because the gator nationals is huge yes it's a big one well we're getting ready to go back to some action here on the racetrack what are your thoughts you ever going to get up on one of these if uh Cody uh, gives you the opportunity. Well, I'm going to be the guy that says with age comes a cage. Yeah, smart move. <laughs> There's your other teammate right there, Briar yep. Bauman, on the three. I am just still fascinated with, with how these guys, I mean, they communicate out there. I was watching, like, in the practice area where they, one guy will let another guy pass. You know, it's some pretty good communication going on between them. But uh, I don't want nothing to do with no front brake, sliding out on the back end on a dirt bike. I'm, I'm out on that. <laughs> How much do the Rick Ware Racing guys get together and chat you and all the different other drivers and riders that he has? It's usually at an event. Everybody's schedule is so crazy. I mean, obviously, the, everybody knows the – how wild the NASCAR schedule is. I mean, 36 events a year is just nuts. We do 21, you know, so it's either they're coming to one of my events I, or, like here, I'm going to one of those events. It's it's fun to find out, for me, just how things are done differently. You know, and I don't mean just on the racetrack, but, like, the pit area set up, how things are done and how things are just done a little differently at every little venue. And that's what's been fun about working with Rick is he's familiar with all of it. And so we've changed a few things, you know, like our hospitality area. We're seeing the big monster area right there. We've changed some of that, which has made our hospitality nicer for our the guests. Experience. You know, is it's it's pretty cool. Do you guys share uh, athlete information, like how each other trains or how you maybe maybe not so much training because what you have to do is so much different than everybody right, else. Right. But maybe the mental aspect of oh, it. Oh, yeah. Believe me. I'm racing a bunch of kids. I'm always picking the brains of, of, of all of them. You know, is it something they do that, that, you know, maybe they'll share with me and I share with them what I do. I mean, because mine is intense focus for just a few moments, obviously. But, and these guys, you know, I know they, they get longer races. You know, they battle losing some focus as the event moves on. But 
I absolutely, when I, as soon as I get the opportunity, I mean, I, I was talking to Shana earlier, you know, just asking her about what it's like, you know, she's won a lot of races, done a lot of things. Anybody that does another sport, I'm interested in what they do and what their training is. Yeah, well, unfortunately for our guys right now, they're dealing with something you have to deal with at times, too. The fact, the track is a little wet right now, so that's why the riders came out and then immediately went back off the track. So they're going to do a little grading here and uh, no jet dryer. No jet dryer no action. No jet dryer here, yeah. unfortunately. Although I've talked, I've talked about it before. You know there's a dirt track jet dryer in Boone, Iowa? No. Yeah. It's amazing. Really? At Boone Speedway in Boone, Iowa, they have a jet dryer specifically designed for the dirt track. And it is phenomenal what it does, man. Because, you know, all that water at the dirt track sits on the top, oh, right? Oh, absolutely. So they bring it out behind a big old John Deere tractor or whatever company they're working with. And that thing just blows like the first six to eight inches just, you know, right off the yeah. surface, you know. Being in the turn in the grandstands is probably not the place to be. Not, not where you want to be when that thing comes. You <laughs> see people scattering when they wheel that thing out. But it's it's pretty something. So who's going to be your stiffest competition this year? Is it going to be Coletta? You certainly can't argue. I mean, what he did last year was impressive and well-deserved, I might add. I mean, the guys finished second I don't know how many times for the championship. But I think that we are going to be in one of the toughest years ever. I mean, last year there were 12 full-time, fully-sponsored touring cars. This year we're at 16. So it's going to – the competition level is going up. And, I mean, it's going to be a lot of the same suspects. I mean, Doug Coletta is probably the one you think of immediately because he's wearing the number one on the car. But for me, I immediately go to Sean Langdon. Sean Langdon is the champion, but they moved Doug's crew chief over to Sean's car – and brought in another guy to work with Doug, and of course Alan Johnson oversees both cars. So there's there's two cars that you got to watch right now. Brittany Force had a little bit of an off year that won't that won't maintain that way. Steve Torrance, he battled right down to the end, and of course and the, Billy's going to run the whole year. And right? Billy's running the whole year. His dad, and of course the big kicker is Leah. Obviously, you know was right down to final round, final race for a possible championship. She yeah. lost to Doug is the big story is, you know, what's, what's, what's Tony going name? to do? What's yeah, what's that guy's name? Exactly. Old Smoke. The old Smoke. You know, how's he going to fare, you know, in a top fuel car? We all know he can drive. You know, it's just a matter of, of getting up to speed. And I know he's been doing that over the past couple of years, doing the A-field dragsters, testing Leah's car on Monday, you know. Uh, and I've said this to him, you know, I'm, I'm waiting for the first person that holds him up staging. Are we going to see some uh, old – Old smoke come Old out. Old smoke. <laughs> <laughs> I could see him unbuckling out of the car, yeah. shutting that engine off and walking over and yeah. just reaching in, right? Exactly. Oh, that'd be great. You know, I, I might have been involved in a little bit of that with a guy named Doug Herbert years I was ago. Say, you know, at least if that happens, Tony's a little more my size where Doug Herbert's about a foot and a half taller Doug's than I am. Doug's a giant. Yes, he is. Doug's a giant. <laughs> and it, it's funny because you two had so many legendary moments like that oh, yeah. but you two are truly the best of friends we really are you know at, at the time when all that happened we certainly were not we were not exchanging you know christmas cards at all and then with what doug had happened to him and then basically the same thing happened with me with losing you know he lost two sons and i lost a son and we just kind of came together and worked for that awesome cause that he started which breaks. is breaks you know be responsible keep everyone safe a great teenage driver program that he does all over the country there are over fifty thousand teens now that have gotten a free class for safer driving it's pretty incredible and and, and that's the thing it is just remarkable there's no reason not to put your kid through it and mom and dad can go through as well alongside required one yeah. of them and i didn't realize i mean i was helping him with all sorts of things and until we had an event that i actually participated in i actually learned things myself i really did oh, yeah. you know it's, it's great for the parents and one of the things they tell the kids during the class it's a 45 minute class and the majority of it is driving is if your parents drive bad you'll drive bad yeah. and that's the case with a lot of kids yeah oh yeah that's all they know right you know? right so they don't know that with me i mean i'm you know I'm all, I'm right, all good. Right. Never on the phone, never no, nothing like no, that. No, no, yeah. no, 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 uh, no. My, my kid's problem was uh, leaving the stoplight without leaving a trail of smoke behind. Oh, that, I wonder that, where you yeah, got that. I don't know where that come from. Yeah, old stomping steer over <laughs> exactly. here. Exactly. <laughs> Man, what a beautiful night to be at the racetrack. I mean, this is so fun. This is my second year of coming down here for this, and it's just so different but yet the same. Race fans are amazing. They really are, right? Tell me a little bit about Parts Plus and what's going on with them. 
So, as I said, this is my 13th year with those guys. They A couple years ago, they merged with Pronto, so they're a very, very large, and they are a more direct to the shop. You don't see as many brick and mortar stores because they are more sell directly to shops. So that allows some of the, you know, necessarily not small shops, but shops to be able to compete with the chain operations there are out there. So they can become a member of Parts Plus and they get to buy their parts and they get them delivered. And it's really a great operation. They've been around for over 50 years. Wow. So just bring it right to you. Bring it right to you. Okay, buddy. Well, we got some bikes on course. Thank you for coming by, Clay Thank Milliken. Thank you. Best of luck this weekend at the Gators, and go get 337. Hopefully even more than that. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Clay Milliken. Thank you. Parts Plus, Rick Ware Racing, Top Field Dragster. Headed over to Gainesville and the Gator Nationals, which you'll be able to see on Fox and FS1 over the course of the weekend live from there. Good luck, buddy. Go get them. Thanks, buddy. Okay. Bikes out on track. Scotty Dubler will be coming back in here in a second. We'll get into the action. Here's Dallas Daniels right here on the 32 Yamaha. That Estenson racing machine ready to go. Maybe contend for that championship again this year. There's Briar Bauman on the Parts Plus Rick Ware Racing number three. Briar number one on the board right now with an 18.691. And it's Davis Fisher, Dallas Daniels, Brandon Robinson, and Cameron Smith. Really excited to see what Cameron can do this year with his new deal on the 34. There's Jared Meese, the now nine-time champion of the series. Jared sitting in ninth right now as he slips back time-wise. Slips up right there. And here comes Scotty Dubler back into the booth. You got anything you want to pitch? I'm I'm doing the pitch man thing right now. You got okay. anything you want to pitch? Well, maybe Dr. Pepper is listening. I'll take a Dr. Pepper sponsorship. Buddy, you haven't have you found any yet? No, not I'm yet. I'm getting I, a little worried. Yeah, I haven't tried hard enough. I'm getting a little worried. There's some arena cross folks outside, and I got to talk to some of them. I haven't seen them since I called uh, arena cross for a while. So it's pretty cool to go out there They've and check it out. They've been racing down here this year for the first time in a long time. Exactly. So. And it looks like you've had a fun time in here. Oh, we had Mark Florian from Flow in here. We've had our buddy Clay Milliken come through. I'm sure there'll be some more before the day is done. There's Cameron Smith. I was just saying how excited I am to see what Cameron yeah. can do on that new package he's got. Right, He just slips down a little bit time-wise. He's back to seventh, and Jared Meese moves up from ninth to sixth. I think Cameron's really going to have a, a good run this year on that 34. Yeah, they've got, you know, the Varnes family behind them, and they've got Schaefer's Motorsports right there behind them, and it's, it is a, it's a good fit. He has been going to the shop a lot, getting used to hanging out with the folks and, and doing riding. You know, if, even if it's trail riding, there's a little bitty short track at their shop, but riding as much as they can and, and seat time, you can't replace it. Well, and you and I all through the last year talked a lot almost every week about here's Cameron Smith again right on the verge of having – that breakthrough night, if you will, and he just couldn't get there. And maybe now, Scotty, he's got the final little pieces that he needs to put it all together and put that final big night together and get a win. Yeah, you just never know. And he's been training a lot. Like I said, he raced some of the uh, World Championship ice races this season, got his first ice racing win. So, you know, it's it's he's got the momentum coming to the season. How about Breyer at the top spot? 18.691. This is qualifying underway now second group of the super twins sammy halbert he was fast the earlier XR 750 he was fast all day yesterday as he well was the fastest one wasn't he correct and scotty do you know that this very motorcycle right here 13 years ago won a title that seems like forever right but those motorcycles are so fast. Brad Baker's father-in-law built the motor in that one, and that's Mr. Stauffer. Yep. Yeah, that was one of Brad's bikes. Oh, there's a bike down oh, right there. I saw some bright orange leathers. Because there's a bike down right there. I like Sammy looks up at the big train to see if he can see a replay. Yeah, there. that was one of Brad Baker's bikes that uh, 
Sammy is riding here today. I recognize the bright paint job, and Mike Stoffer rebuilt that engine for him to get that thing dialed in, and the rider that went down, you see the airbag suit is deployed. That is the 22 of Mitch Harvitt. They call him the mower, and he's picking himself back up. They had a little bit of a wild offseason. Some of the bikes they, they were planning on riding didn't get put together and didn't get from Illinois all the way up to Pennsylvania, so they're uh, riding this one. I'm not sure if he has a spare bike. They're trying to check things out. There goes our medic that travels to all the races with them and he went and checked on him but you can see the airbag suit is fully inflated yeah. did you bring a bunch of money with you today uh maybe because i'm going to cost you some right now Ooh, don't, don't look in your phone yet don't oh, look. I, I have to don't. look i have to look at something don't. else i'm supposed to make an announcement i'm looking at bob so i'm just supposed to let everybody know that if their fans caught on the hill or on the upper rim they will be ejected from Oops. the premises don't need that I, that's why i wanted to say it right, right now because good. because we don't need them you know, getting yeah, ejected. No. We don't want to get you thrown out. So if you're on the grassy hill or if, you're on, or if you're on top of that grassy hill area, you need to get down from there before you get ejected. And I'll that's because the big speedway is hot. It's active. Moto America riders are doing their stuff over there. So you never know. We have to be careful of all Correct. that. All right. But here's why I didn't want you to look at your phone. I didn't look at it. Let's see. What do you got? Because I just got a text from our good buddy, Ronnie Jones, Doc on national number 16. Dr. Jones to you? And, of course, our friends at Back on Track – Okay. Are doing their auction again. Well, not the auction, but the uh, raffle. The raffle here yep. today. And he just sent me a picture of one of the items that's up in the raffle. Oh, Look at that, Nikki the Nikki Hayden a replica helmet. helmet. Look at that. That's the one I've wanted for a while. And it's, man, that thing is a beautiful helmet. Well, break out that wallet, buddy. And they've got a Scotty Parker jacket as yeah, well. Tell me Two the story prices. on the jacket. I don't know. They said it's an older jacket. I don't know if it's one of Scotty's jackets. Actually, one of Scotty's jackets. Your, your plane is here. Okay, I gotta go. Mr. Dubler, right. your ride has arrived. <laughs> um, so is this a jacket that Scotty wore and was like a champion's jacket or something? I'm or? not sure. It's just a Scotty Parker. It's got to be a Harley Davidson check because he wrote for the factory Harley Davidson. But he has his name on it? I, I believe so. So I, that's That'd all the information cool. we got. So there's two items uh, uh, up they're raffling them off. Tonight, Get right? your tickets. Yeah, we're going to talk to Ronnie a little bit later on during opening ceremonies. He'll tell you more about it. They are walking around. That is for Back on Track. That's to help riders that get hurt in our sport. That's called Back on Track. Used to be class of 79 and friends. Is, uh, they're getting that down rider checked out, checking on the racetrack. There's another new rider on a new team right there, the 70th. Declan Bender from Illinois, part of the Fast Boys from Illinois. He is riding the BriggsAuto.com Grumpy Old Men Race Team right there on that number 70 motorcycle. So Declan Bender was the AFT Singles Rookie of the Year last year, making the move up to the Super Twins class. That Does that make us Grumpy Old Men Broadcasting pair? We could, we could we, do we that. We could fit that, yeah. couldn't we? Yeah, maybe we can get a team shirt. We could. <laughs> Grumpy we could. Old Men Announce Racing Team. Yes. Yeah, something like that. Add a few more letters. All right, they, still, they just told him to fire him up, and there's the uh, 21 of Blackjack. He's using Will Davis's font. I saw and that numbers and, and everything. I love it on the 21. You in your tracks when you saw it for the first time, he, didn't it? He called Cole Davis and, and asked Ronda. him. Yep, and Cole and Ronda and asked him for permission to run that same font, and he said, "Yep, go for it." But I mean, when you see it for the first time, it just stops you in your tracks. It's beautiful, it? beautiful. He's out there on the Zanotti racing machine. Michelle DeSavile turning the wrenches. They've been doing a lot of the work on, on these bikes up at SNS up there in Wisconsin. He's got Mission Foods on his chest. You can see SNS on the back of the leathers. Oh, John Cox grabs a handful, and the front wheel came straight up as we go right back out front to the 69 of Sammy Albert. The 92, Brandon Price. The price is right. Like Sammy reached up right there and maybe grabbed a tear off as he comes off the tournament. You don't have time. You don't have much time, Ralph, to grab a tear off at this place. No, no, you're pretty busy all the time here. Yeah, on the throttle, and you don't want to let off with that left hand unless you really have to. So I know when it's wetter out there, you pretty much have no choice. If it's drier, you kind of let the dust stay there until you just have to reach up. As we look at John Cox holding off the 21 right there, Bruner. And, Scotty, the rider's going to move around more tonight on that seat than they probably will all year long. Yeah, I was talking to Kristen about that in that very first session. So for some of the fans that weren't here yet or just tuning in on Flow Racing, so you slide back coming off the corner, putting your weight over that rear wheel to get the traction so you can grab that throttle as, as quickly and as hard as you can. But then you slide forward. You physically slide on the motorcycle up onto the gas tank, basically, Basically, and put that weight on that front wheel so you can really, you know, kind of steer that bike with the handlebars going in the corner and then pick that foot up as soon as you can, start that slide back. And 
in talking to Dan Bromley about that when he came in on the Honda after the first session, I said, tell me, Dan, what, what's the new Honda like? He goes, man, one of the best things about it is the seat. Really? And I said, is it something that Tom Saddleman designed with the seat itself or just the way you sit on this particular bike? He goes, it's really the way you sit on this bike. He said he's got an extra six inches or so that he can move back on that bike, which for a rider his size is a lot. And that can really affect, as we saw Sammy Halbert there pulling in, uh, that can really affect how that bike's going to perform because he can shift that weight around. Yeah, I can't figure out what's going on with Sammy. He pulled off in one of the earlier sessions as well. So it, the bike is still running, obviously, but he just pulled off. And I don't know if he's saving that thing for later or what. It is, yeah, I think it's a 50-year-old motorcycle. I know Mike Stauffer just rebuilt it, so it's just like brand new. But uh, yeah. here he comes, still under power. So he just shifted into neutral and is taking it back to the pit area. But he's quick time right now in the first round of qualifying, 18.389. He's trying to get that extra money for that flow racing fastest lap. How about that? Mark Florian putting up $5,000. That makes me want to get my helmet. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, I tried to get I'm... us a little bump up in the fee, but uh, he, he seemed to just laugh at that part of it. No, I'm, I'm happy sitting right here in the announcer's booth uh, sharing my knowledge of the sport with the fans. But, man, that is amazing. Isn't that great? That's huge. $5,000. You're going to be two very happy riders at the end of this day. Sure enough. that is Right just... now, Sammy Albert's in the running for that. He sure is. And that's the fastest lap throughout the day that's it's right for practice qualifying, qualifying heat races challenge races, challenge race last chance events. qualifier if you got to run a semi or the main event so it's the fastest lap and they'll let us know tomorrow who the fastest lap was today but right now right as btr ladies come out bill train race and then tomorrow's fastest lap person will get their money which will be back to the 500 dollars by then unless we get uh, mark all excited about it yeah at he's here Sonoya. That's when they'll hand out the check for tomorrow. As my phone starts going crazy, people are wanting to sign up to race. Yeah, and people are looking to get into the raffle for the Nikki Hayden replica helmet. So they're giving out, Ronnie's telling me here, they're going to be raffling off a Nikki Hayden replica helmet each night. And we want everybody to come by the tent outside of the turn to check out the 68 Harley Sprint Flat Tracker which we'll be drawing for later this month. Time's running out. Ooh, might have to go put a couple so of bucks who, on that Who one. told you about the $5,000? Mark. Mark. Florian. 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 Told yes, you sir. that tonight, right here. Right here. We shook on it right here. Wow. All right. Yeah. In my seat while I was gone. While you were gone. I'm not going to tell you where I was. <laughs> and his idea, by the way, I didn't have to coax that out of him. He Good. Just... Good wanted to do it. Tommy Duma listening in back at home. TDFJ, they gave championship rings out. The riders got to design their own rings last year. We'll have... How dare he go and get knee surgery before the first race of the year so he couldn't be here? I think he had no choice. I think uh. they did a knee replacement, so he had to get it done. Maybe he wanted to get it done before he could only maybe just miss one or two races. Yeah. But Jackie Mitchell will take care of his honors during opening ceremonies. We'll hand out the championship rings a little bit later on. Tommy's watching on Flow Racing right now. Hope you're feeling better, Tommy. Hurry up, get better, and uh, get back to the track. There's Kinsey Luca right there. She has quick time so far, 20.720. She's married to a racer. And Andrew Looker has been focusing more on cars. They have, you know, some, some children, and, and their interest has moved to four wheels. Oh, Kinsey just about high sides right there as we're talking about her. So uh, Andrew's at home watching the kids. Probably racing. This weekend. Could be. Yeah, exactly. White flag is out for the Royal Infield Built Train Race qualifying round number one. There's the checkered flag for the 17. I like what they're doing. They're trying to stay away from those bumps as we have, like we've talked about throughout this broadcast so far, as we got some new riders out there. Maya Maffei is on that number 28, and Taya Little is on the 11, two of the names we're going to have to learn real quick because they're sitting right now second and third fastest. Let's take a look at this replay, Ralph. Watch the 17 bike. Getting on the throttle, though. The front end started, started washing out, and then she got the back end, almost stepped around on her. She's a very good rider. and She, she did a good job catching she, it. She didn't just shut the throttle completely off because that's when you high side, but she backed off slowly and gathered control of that motorcycle. That was a great job. So, Scotty, walk me through that for those that have maybe never experienced that before and never will. Obviously, it's a seat-of-the-pants feel thing, 
But as you said, you don't want to just chop the throttle off completely, right? You got to ease out and then ease and, back in. And it's so hard to do because your brain thinks, "Oh no, I'm going to crash." Shut the throttle off. But you, if you shut it off too hard, it will just stop the momentum of the motorcycle. The bike will stand up straight. It will spit you off. All right, Kristen is caught up with one of the stars of the wrench spinners in our sport, Brian Bigelow. Yeah, Brian Bigelow moving in a new direction this year with Chase Sadoff. They're on their own team this year, the JPG Trucking Honda team. What prompted the change in your program to move with Chase Sadoff and start on a new venture? It's it's just the the one-on-one -on -one, uh, personal personal touch. <clears throat> We're competing with a couple teams that have a similar program and. Um, I want to mimic everything that Jared Mees and Kenny Tolbert do, and that's what they do, and that's what I want to do. And um, Chase is like a, he's like a son to me. We just have so much fun, and uh, so far it's been a great start. And um, we're looking for big things this year, so we're really excited. We have a new sponsor who's never been to a flat track race, so this is cool for us. Chase Sadoff still looking for his first win in the American Flat Track Singles class. Hopeful to get it this season, Scotty, and no better time than the season opener, am I right? Well, Kristen, what a great way for them to get started. Chase is quick right now with an 18.545, and he's got the champ right on his tail, Cody Kopp, who's third quickest right now, Scotty. Yeah, and, and Chase just looked over his shoulder. He wanted to see. He could feel somebody is there. He didn't want maybe doesn't want to show exactly all of his cards right now. I mean, the track is what it is, so... But he can feel somebody who's coming. It is the one who's moving up the leaderboard up to third. But as Chase slips a little bit wide and then squares off the corner and gets the drive where there's probably more moisture down there at the bottom coming off that corner. Dalton Godier jumps up to second with an 18.490. Patton is third now. Rusev is fourth. And Cody Cobb slips back to fifth just in front of James Ott. Yep. The 26 of Aiden Roos Evans has been in the top four spots through both rounds of practice, and now right here in the first round of qualifying, he is feeling really good out there on his Yamaha. Look at that hole right there outside of, of turn four. So you want to try to miss that because uh, on the amateur day on Tuesday, if you hit that, it kind of sets you up out of the seat. And your handlebars start going back and forth. So you'll, these riders do everything they can to miss that bump. And there's maybe one starting form right there in turn number one, too. So try to go in under that. So, you know, you're racing the racetrack, but you're also racing each other at the very same time. How about Chase Sadoff? 18.393. Sadoff with the quickest lap so far in this session. That's just a little bit off of Sammy Halbert, 18.389. So, wow, how close is that, Ralph? That's pretty impressive, right? Yeah, exactly. Shane, it's extra Bauman just pulling off the racetrack, the 52. She's the winningest AFT singles rider. There is Petten at the back of the pack, the 82, all the way up there in that third spot. Third quick so far in this first round of qualifying. All the competitors will get two rounds of qualifying. All right, give me one thing you're really looking forward to this year. I, man. Everything. I mean, every everything. All the changes. I think. To, can I put it in in one big balloon like that? Sure. All the changes. You know, different riders have moved to different teams and different brands. And you know, new riders are in the Super Twins class. New riders from amateur ranks are, are now in the singles class. So I think for me, that's it. All the different changes that have happened in this off season. I can't wait for the Spirit of Sturgis. That's going to be exciting. That is going to be a very unique concept, and it's going to be. A great boost for the sport, I think, because it's going to draw a lot of new eyeballs to flat track racing. It, it definitely is. I mean, a, a lot of people I know already have subscriptions to Flow Racing because they watch all the sprint cars and, and all the other stuff that is on there that you were talking about just a few moments ago. So I think if, if some of those start you know, watching flat track, maybe if we come to a town near them, they'll start coming out to, to see us in person. There's nothing like it. If you've never been, if you're watching right now for the first time, or if you're watching at home and have never been to a race, I highly suggest you come to a race because you get to see, you know, you get to see it closer. You get to watch what you want. You get to feel it. And sometimes you get dirt on you. And it's all part so. of the experience. Yeah, I it's, it's so. so much fun. That's one of the things about all forms of racing, right? Yes. It's all that way. You know, I think Bubba Blackwell and I went to an NHRA race in Pomona, and uh, we got rubber on our shirts oh, yeah. and the smell and the feel. I mean, it's just there's nothing like being there. I, I would I would compare it to going to a concert. That experience is what you get when you come to American Flat Track. Yes. Watching Raggio on the 55, he's back in 15th. 
with an 18.97. He's just wheeling through that hole coming up to turn four. He's got on a new team as well. We'll talk more about that as the season goes on. But Sluggo Racing on board is Raggio Racing, and, and they've switched over to KTMs for this season. There's the 40. That's a brand new number. That's Olin Kistler from the Pacific Northwest getting his two digit number by making a main event last season. You lose your three digit number if a two digit number is available. That's Kistler on the 40 I was just talking about. He's currently in the 22nd spot. There he is on our screen. I like those colors too, man. You're right. The bright colors are coming back. It's kind of whoa. It's a few riders right through that big hole there. And there's one there, yeah, one and there's there, one, and one back there. Yeah, one coming off the corner, and then one right there that uh, the 56 of Jordan Jean touches his back wheel against right there going into turn one. So, you know, try to stay away from it, but the momentum coming off of turn four, when you're on the throttle and that thing's, you know, drifting a little bit, sometimes you might have to go through there because you don't want to check up. You don't want to let off that throttle. Yeah. So Chase Sadoff, quickest in that first round of qualifying out here today with a 18.393 qualifying round one. So Sadoff's been quick all day on that new ride, 18.393. Next group's rolling onto the racetrack. We got uh, 32 AFT singles here tonight. Only the fastest 18 will be in tonight's main event. So you, you need to come out here and get a good lap in. These are some of the newer riders. We'll take a look at the replay. Watch the hole coming off four. Yeah, Ralph, right here. So, Raggio. Now, I, but watch I, it here, Scotty, the second one. Look at that. Yeah, see, that really That's upsets That's getting us. nasty. I like what he did coming off of four, Ralph, pulling the front wheel to wheelie through that hole. Yeah, and then, like, that second hole sets you up out of the saddle. It transfers the weight to the front wheel, to the back wheel. It kind of go back and forth. So, I think I'm okay with going through the hole off of the corner. I would do my best to miss that hole right there going into the corners. We're looking at Reese Podorf. There's the 110. Dominic DeMario, just a brand new pro rider right there. And, and back up to Reese Podorf from Kansas. He rode with us a little bit last season. There's DeMario. Cassio on the 121. Right behind him looks like the uh, 115. Justin Anselmi, another new rider from California. And this is, you know, some, some of these guys, it's their first time to ever race here. They're, they don't run very many amateur races here at all. We did this last Tuesday, so uh, none of the pro riders could race that race because that's a rule in the rule book. You can't race a certain amount of days before the national. So, you know, a lot of these riders were out here watching what was going on and watching how the track changed, but they weren't allowed to race here. Again, Scotty, for those that maybe have never been to Daytona for a flat track race, Every region, as it is with every form of dirt track racing, every region has different surfaces. What you find in Florida, not what you're going to get when we get to Sonoya, Georgia in a couple of weeks, or when you get to California, Ventura, or right. Springfield, or Lima for that matter. Correct. What do we have here in Daytona? You can see it's already starting to give us that blue groove. It's starting to, it is starting to rubber up right now. They were trying to keep as much moisture on it as possible. They brought out the Harley rake. They're trying to dig it up. So when they first built this place, it was a lot wider. I don't know if it's the rubber from the go-karts and from our bikes changing the color of the dirt, but you know, Chris Carr used to call it moon dirt. It's gone through some transitions, and it's been sitting here for quite some time. So. You know, dirt will continue to change and change color just like everything else does. But And there's Renshaw right there, the 265, the rookie. But the dirt has changed. And you can see Renshaw right there really scrubbing the front end with it, you know, turning it left, actually. And usually they pitch it to the right. So, uh, But the track will go through a lot of changes. Right now it looks like it's taking a lot of rubber, especially on the bottom, which will make some deep stuff up high. In that last break, they watered the high side of the racetrack. And if there's some traction up there and if that – low line is going slow we might see a few riders get aggressive and go try the high line maybe try to go in deep square off the corner and shoot down to the groove coming off the corner so it'll make for some interesting racing for sure and a little bit of a sandy dirt i guess is the yes. best way to explain yeah. it here there. all right Kristen, i see you down there in the essence in racing pits what's going on yeah so guys new teams new bikes changes to the bikes, modifications, something so clever that I noticed yesterday during practice. The Essence and Racing Yamaha team has fabricated special airbox lids. Now, last year we noticed a lot of the teams, especially on the miles, kind of punching holes in the airbox lids to create more airflow. And as we know, more airflow equals more speed. But when I talked to the Essence and Racing Yamaha team about these specially designed and engineered airbox lids, they actually have different lids for different tracks this season, all with different prerogatives. So here at the Daytona Short Track, they are using 
this air box lid, which is allowing a great amount of air, but also still protecting the air box and the filter in there. But as they go to the miles, I would anticipate seeing something with maybe even more airflow here. We've also seen that trend start to take shape in Supercross as well. If you watch Supercross and the Club MX team, they've been punching holes in the air box. Guys, this is changing how we race motorcycles in the air box lid, but uh, the SNC Racing Yamaha team finding a very sleek, very smart way to get a little more power and performance out of their bikes this year. I like it. I mean, you gotta, you have to try different things, and to get that more, more airflow going into the air box, it's you know the faster you can go. I love the creativity side of motorsports. I'm not a technical guy, if you will. Don't ask me to build your bike, right? Because <laughs> neither it, it won't last you ten feet. But I love these mechanics who are true craftsmen and geniuses behind the scenes of what they dream up, what they come up with, and how to make their machines go faster and handle better, stop better, all the different things that they do. I love what they dream up. I'll be curious to see if they'll run something similar like that on a mile. In a mile, you try to get smaller, and you don't want maybe as much air going through there. They might have less holes in it. Like, we watch NASCAR on the track behind us over here. They put tape over the radiator because they, they want, you know. They block it off. Exactly. So we'll see how many times they use that particular gas tank. But, you know, the creativity is awesome. You saw also the rear wheel was off on that motorcycle. So they're either changing gears or maybe even putting a different tire on or even turning that – you know, the rear wheel around. Just so you know, I'm better qualified for this job right here. You want to go help Big P out? or? Well, not really. Oh, I'm just okay. saying I'm better qualified oh, for I got that. You. I wouldn't necessarily be good at it. Right. <laughs> I got but you. I'd be better qualified for shoveling dirt. So the dirt brushes, you know, they like they said, they raced here all day Tuesday. The dirt will brush up against the wall. He's trying to bring some of that loose stuff back, and they're putting some more moisture onto the racetrack to try to keep it as tacky as possible and as fast as we can. The other thing I'm qualified to do, Scotty, throw it to break, and that's what we're going to do right now. <laughs> so stay with us. We're going to come right back. Dallas Daniels right there getting ready to go again on his number 32 Essence in Yamaha. We'll have it for you here on Flow Racing. Pretty good, huh? Max Whale's new dog.
back here in Daytona Beach, Florida at the Royal Enfield Short Track here at Daytona on a beautiful Thursday night. The season opener, Scotty, what a way to go begin the year. I can't wait. It's the first day of school, new teams, new colors, a lot of new riders from the singles class, a lot of new riders moving into the Super Twins class. It's Did you get be a new lunchbox? I didn't. I forgot. Kristen, he forgot his new lunchbox. Uh, he doesn't have any Dr. Pepper. We are in real trouble with our boy, Scotty. Well, we're talking about what's new. How about something that's a little more mature? That's a nice way of putting it, right? This is the Harley XG750. It was part of Brad Baker's championship winning program. It is the Dodge XR, excuse me, XR750. I'm so used to saying the XGs. This is the XR750, and it's the Dodge Brothers Castrol Saddle and Racing Team managed and piloted by uh, Sammy Halbert, who I was curious, why are you, do you keep pulling off track, Sammy? Well, his team told me that after seeing himself at the top of the boards, he said, I don't know if I need any more time out on track, and that is speaking volumes. That is confidence if I've ever heard it. But what I love about this bike, and Scotty, you can probably speak better to this than I can, but it is one of the old school carbureted bikes. It is a proven bike. It has won a championship with Brad Baker, and it is back out on track here tonight at the Daytona Short Track. So an exciting bike to kind of look at, a little in the Nostalgic, check it out. But uh, Scotty, you can probably speak to this a little better than I can. It is so beautiful. It's it's <laughs> nice. It's nice to see an XR out here, and it's it's nice to see one at the top of the board too. And and Mike Stoffer went through that motor, and it's the the bike that Brad Baker won his championship on. So and Mike Stoffer is his father-in-law, Kelsey's dad, and that thing is bad fast right now. And like like we talked about, Ralph, you called it. Why risk it? You know, no, you called it. Well, all right. I'll, I just I'll, agreed with you. I right. think I thought it made all the sense in the world when yeah. you said it. Why risk it? You yeah, know? why? Why? Yeah. He. Here's the thing. Sammy is a very, very experienced rider. Correct. He knows. He knows what he needs to do. And he knows the bike's up on the top of the board right now. He doesn't need to push it any harder than that. Save it. Get ready. And go get him later. And now, I'll, I would say this. If we were at a mile... Be a little bit of a different story, right? Correct. But tonight on this short track, will you put that XR750 as quick as it is in the hands of an expert rider like Sammy Halbert? Leave it alone. I would put all of your money <laughs> on that tonight. All right. And look at the Dodge Brothers. Tony over there on the right. Yeah, That's when he went to the baby. top spot. That was earlier Number today. Number one. Yep. Feels good. All right, Kristen, how about Sammy? Yeah, Sammy. Sammy, we were curious, maybe something was wrong with the bike. You were pulling off after only a few laps, but uh, that was a, a statement of confidence. Yeah, exactly. Um, I could look and see on the board. They had the board, and it showed the 69 was on top, and uh, I felt like I did enough. So um, pull, pulled off, you know, um, trying to make sure this bike lasts the whole week of racing um, and uh, just saved myself a little bit as well. So, um, yeah, I could kind of tell the way the day was going. It seemed like the faster times were coming from kind of like our first couple laps of the session. Um, shout out to Flo for putting up that 5K. I, I think Dallas might have sneaked out the fastest time, though, from that first practice session. Um, I'm going to I'm gonna put that on him being on a fresher track because he was in the first group. But... Uh, yeah, we'll see if we can uh, possibly sneak in a quicker time to get that to get that 5K. That's awfully cool of them to do. Sammy, earlier today you told me you were the winningest rider here. I actually fact-checked you. Jake Johnson has five wins at the Daytona Short Track. You have four. You have the potential to tie him here tonight and maybe surpass him or eclipse him tomorrow. What is the potential that you could potentially go back-to-back -back here this weekend? It's been done before Dallas Daniels did it last year. Yeah, fair play. Um, I think the, I guess that that record only holds for this this track here because I think uh, Jake maybe got most of his wins at the previous track, Municipal Stadium. Um, yeah, when we switched to this track in 2010, I just something about this place really suited my style and was able to start racking off wins um, and was also racking them off on my old carbureted Yamaha. Now we're on the twins, so it's cool to be back on the carbureted bike, and it seems to be what works well for me on this track. And I'm not going to get ahead of myself. Um, I know it's a big job ahead of me, but it's it's good to be in the hunt for sure. Um, a, a chance to do something on this Harley. Sammy, how different is the vibe entering this season, knowing that you're only racing selected rounds, you don't have the pressure of a championship on your shoulders? How do you maybe approach this season differently than you've approached previous seasons? Um, yeah, it's an interesting approach. So now uh, it's a little bit more fun for me, this racing. Uh, I pick the events I want to do and the events that I feel like are safer. So I typically pick the lower speed tracks, even though I could have great success being one of the veteran riders on the miles. I pick the short tracks just for the lower speed safety factor 
and uh, have fun with it, kind of balancing um, not being as strict with my lifestyle. I always took racing so serious, and I still do. Like, I came in very prepared, very fit. I've been riding moto and flat track, um, but I also ride for fun. Like, when I'm riding training during the week, it's a little more, it's a little more about doing it for fun, um, and it's something I've just... I've done it for so long that kind of like the healthy, active lifestyle has become like a routine, a habit for me. So I just maintain that healthy, active life, lifestyle and, and having these few races I do, I do a year kind of make it like me have that goal to chase, be like, all right, stay fit and ready for this next race. So I kind of just stay ready and, um, and have fun with it, enjoy it. Um, I run my onboard camera, always put out a little, lot of social media content. So, so for me, it's more about having fun, connecting with the fans and putting out solid content. There has been a mixed reception surrounding the Sturgis TT and how riders are maybe preparing for that race, but that is one of the races that you actually chose on your limited schedule. Why is that? I, I mean, I love TT racing. I love a little pavement as well. I may even do some road racing this year. I'll be over at the Daytona 200 on Saturday networking, trying to find me a Moto America ride. for. Say hi to JD Beach for us. We miss him. Oh, for sure. We'll be uh, rooting on JD. It's uh, Man, he's such an all-around talent on the uh, dirt and pavement. Um, but I enjoy uh, all types of riding, and so the Sturgis TT is uh, just being a unique event, throwing some pavement in there. It kind of fits, fits with my style and what I do, and just uh, go out there and have some fun. Will you be going out again on track for another qualifying session, or are you satisfied with what we saw? I'm satisfied, but uh, for sure I'm going to go out again, yeah. I may even do all the laps this time. We'll see. It'll be a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> well, we love surprises. Thanks so much, Sammy. <laughs> Best of luck yeah, out I, I think that's a good idea, Sammy. With that $5,000 carrot out there, Sammy, I know you're going to be going for that fastest lap. So he'll try to get out there by himself, not surround himself with any other bikes and not have anybody slowing him down. But, you know, that's awesome of Flow Racing to put up $5,000 tonight for each class for the Flow Flow Racing fastest lap. Very nice. And Mark Florian, uh, him and his brother started Flow Racing because Flow out of Florian, that's where the name comes from. Um, we are thrilled to have them a part of Progressive American Flat Track Championship this year. That's just for this round, by the way, opening night. And then it'll go back to $500 for the fastest lap tomorrow, unless Mark really starts feeling crazy and keeps that number up there. Each, he might have to call it, his brother. If he know. keeps doing that, we'll have to keep inviting him to sit in my seat. Oh, yeah. Oh, I yeah. Mean, I think the riders will You're have You're going to lose your seat real I think fast. the riders will, will the riders fly will him here. The riders will buy you a new seat. Oh, they'll fly him here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Kristen, you found a very familiar face. Where's his leathers at? I know. I was just talking to Sammy Halbert, and he mentioned going over to the Daytona indoor track, and I was like, say hi to J.D. Beach for us because we miss him so much. And, J.D., it's so nice to see you, but how excited are you about being able to go road racing this year? I'm pumped. It's uh, it, it, it's something I've done for a long time, and I, I, I definitely miss being here. Uh, it, it, it's crazy. This is the first time since 2008 that I'm not uh, racing here on the short track or something. So it, it definitely sucks, but I'm looking forward to uh, ro road racing th 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 this season. But uh, don't be surprised if you might see me at a race or two. Would that race or two potentially be a Sturgis TT? Nah, we'll see. I love that he's teasing this already because in the offseason we talked about, man, wouldn't it be great to see J.D. Beach at the Sturgis TT? So we're all hoping for that. Just so you know, that's what we're pulling for. It's so funny. Last night I had a dinner with uh, Hannah Lopa who covers, you know, the Moto America series and Jamie Howe. We all kind of were talking about our favorite riders and it's hard to ignore J.D. Beach. Your name came up quite a few times and, you know, just a pleasure to see you again, J.D. How can we follow your racing this season? So for the fans of American Flat Track who want to follow what J.D. Beach is doing this year, how do we do that? Yeah, so you just go on uh, MotoAmericaLivePlus.com and uh, you, you you can watch all the ra all the ra ra races there and the past races. And uh, our our season uh, starts in April uh, the 19th through the 21st. So uh, that's my first race, and I'm just preparing for that. But it, until then, I'm gonna be uh, rooting on all the dirt 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 uh, mm, dirt track boys. Thanks so much, and best of luck this season, JD. We hope to see you out at the Sturgis TT. Uh, it's good to see JD at the flat track races out here in Daytona. The bikes are pulling in, and the bikes are pulling onto the racetrack, and this is the final round of qualifying for the Mission Super Twins. Okay, got a lot of things I want to talk to you about after all those interviews and everything. The first thing I wanted to get up to was what uh, Sammy was talking about, the different tracks. You mentioned Municipal Stadium, which is where we used to race at for years, right down the street from here. It's literally a high school track. There was, and the surface over there was different than the surface we see here. And then for years, we raced out at Volusia, 
on the half mile over there and the surface there extremely different than the other two. Exactly. It makes it makes for flat track, it makes it why it's so special. It's like you can kind of compare it to the world of outlaws, all the different tracks they go to. Almost every track they go to is a little bit different from the next one. Or since we're on flow high limits. Oh, there you go, that too. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean any sprint car series, exactly. Yeah. But you know, it it, it this dirt is so different. It's so packed in tonight. I thought it was going to be a lot deeper and a lot rougher. Right now, it's staying packed in. It's going to groove up. There's going to be a lot of rubber on the racetrack, I think, a little bit later on. What I like, too, is they're still putting the moisture on the outside of the track. Yeah. I think a little later on, we might see somebody get aggressive and go out there in the deep stuff. How soon would you go out there? I, I would almost want to try it right now. If qualifying wasn't so important, I'd almost want to try it right now. But in a heat race, if you're stuck behind a pack of six riders, why not go out, go out there, see if you can get in deep, square up the corner, and shoot underneath the other yeah, guys in front of you. Give it a run. You might as well. You might. This is qualifying. Round number two, the fastest time. We'll get you on the pole of tonight's race and pick up some Pronto Parts Plus Pole Award money as well. As the white flag is out for Briar Bauman on the three, Dallas Daniels on the 32. Davis Fisher's got some new looking motorcycles, number 67. Dallas Daniels with an 18.557. That's the number one time right now, Scotty. Then it's Briar Bauman, Davis Fisher, Brandon Robinson, and Jared Mees has inched his way up to fifth. And I'm loving Cameron Smith sitting in sixth. That's going to be my dark horse pick for the night. I love it. I like it. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to say Stanley Halbert's a dark horse, even though he's all the way back down in 13th because he hasn't he's gone out yet. Well, he hasn't gone out yet, but he's also such a veteran rider, right? That yeah. I yeah. think that you always have to consider Sammy, a guy of his stature, a uh, serious contender every time he shows up. And, and when he races here, like he just told Kristen, he, he feels like he's at home. He's won here four yes. times, you know, yeah. and and he's, that's not a dark horse. That's a serious that's a, that's contender a, every yeah, time. Yeah, that's like one of the favorites, I think. You know, yeah. uh, and you can, you almost want to put Jared Meese as maybe a dark horse too because he's never won here. If you you're just looking, called the nine-time champion a dark horse. Listen, if you're looking at stats, he's never won here. I know. So let's let's encourage him on. Come on, Jared. So put your name so on the book. So does that make him a dark horse, or <laughs> does that make him? Um, There's another uh, term we got to come up we'll, with. We'll figure that. something out. Yeah. So I know what you're getting at. My, I know he's not the dark horse, but he he, he Maybe has it finally won here. his time. He's not the favorite to win here tonight. Exactly. There is number 69. As we get our eyes on Sammy Halbert to see what the XR750 can do. What, what's good about the XRs out here, Ralph? Oh, he's really whiskey sideways, whiskey throttling it right there, but. The crank is heavier. It's it's good. It, it it does. It has less wheel spin coming off the corners. So that's why the XR is so good here. I think. Gonna help you on a short track. Yes, for sure. Well, they're good on miles too, but it's because on a mile you can just keep that thing wide open a lot longer. But coming off the corner is so important to drive yourself to the next corner. There's the 13 of Morgan Mister going by, one of the Hondas. There's the 99, the freaking nature Kevin Stalling. So we're kind of going through the pack a little bit. It's good to see the red, white, and blue Hondas back out here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Morgan Mishler right there on the 13th. According to myself and Bert Sumner, we did some research. We believe the last time a Honda was in the Premier Class main event was around 2012 to Coin Mile, Nikki Hayden. That's a long time ago. Yeah. What a moment, right? Yeah. Speaking of Nikki Hayden, don't forget our friends at Back and Tracker rep raffling off replica helmets. Two of them. One Two tonight. Of them, one tonight. One tomorrow. Ooh. For Nikki from Nikki Hayden's design. The big Operate 69. Money for the Back on Track charity. Such a great charity. Get your tickets here tonight for that. 47 Michael Hill. This is the speedy cam right here on the start finish line. The freight train, Logan McGrain, making the move up to the Super Twins class. There he is on the 166. He's the defending world right world ice racing champion. Number 166, there he is. How many ice races did you do this year? I did four so far. There's one more in the final rounds the same weekend we're in Sonoya, so I will miss that final round, but I did the first four. Checkered flag is out right there for the 69. Sammy Halbert, second quick in this session, correct? Correct. He's still the top spot.
Yeah, he was fastest in that first round with a 18.389. So that first time, there's probably more moisture on the racetrack, yeah. maybe a little bit more traction. So right now, Sammy is quickest overall. But that might overall. be uh, all he needs to get that five grand, right? right. Very because, possibly could be. Uh, he thinks somebody if was, the track dries out, it might be the advantage of having done it earlier. He thinks somebody was faster in that first round of practice. We're not sure exactly, but uh, we'll have to wait and see when all the times unfold. That's what I like about that award. It's from practice, qualifying, heat races, challenge races, last chance qualifiers with the semifinals in yep. the main event. So it's anybody's chance to make some extra money. Yeah. Big money. Oh, the 166 Logan pushing Green back. Oh, it's changed, it's changed off that motorcycle right there. Tough break for the freight train. So that is it for qualifying for the Super Twins. Up next to be the Royal Infield Build Train Race Program. They'll be coming out in just a moment. There's a look at the flags. We got a little bit of a breeze out there, keeping it a little bit cooler. It was supposed to be about 81 degrees out here today, which is perfect for some flat track motorcycle racing. And there are the ladies onto the racetrack. Royal Infield Build Train Race Program. We have eight competitors. One rider took a spill yesterday, so she is a scratch, and one rider is at home watching in Wisconsin. That's Morgan Piller, and uh, hopefully she gets well soon. There's Kenzie Luker on the 17 bike. You hear one of them revving pretty hard right there going past us. 22 out there, Hannah Robertson. 35, Hannah Lang. Hannah Lang is from Wisconsin. She's got a couple brothers that race. There's the two, Michaela Nichols. And the 11, Taya Little. Very different spelling of that name. T-A-I-A, -A, but I talked to her, it's Taya. She's in the lead right now, 21.019. Kinsey Luker's now second quick, 21.051. Train race is going to be with us for about seven events this year. Oh, really? Six, seven I, I've races, seen I which ones is. they're going to be at. That's awesome. Yeah. They, and they've got, I talked to Chris, I was telling Kristen earlier before while you were outside that about half the ladies have moved on and we got about half of the new field. So I like that. It's a two year program. You stay around, you can stay for two years if you get invited back in and two years, then you graduate on out. And there's also a road racing program as well for Bill Train Race. And that looks like a lot of fun as yeah. well. Our buddy Freddie Spencer helping out with that. Awesome. There's the 11 looking pretty fast. Taya Little. She's trying to go around the 28. The 28 is trying to use some body English going into turn number three. I sure do like those bright pink wheels. I do like the yellow leathers, though, too. They, I like their own little style. You Everybody know? has their own. I love it. Branding, don't they? They sure do. Taya goes in high, squares up the corner right there, trying to come up the inside of the 28. Taya uses a lot of body English, yeah. doesn't she? Yeah. So and that and that may be from her upbringing. What she rode before this, it, it may be working for her right now. As the 28th is currently third quick so far. Yeah. She's getting at the corners pretty good. She's, she's drifting up the racetrack right there a little bit. That's okay because the 11 went right up the track as well. Taya Little is the quickest. The 11 right now is the fastest. Kenzie Luker is second. Maya Maffei on the 28 in that third position. She's right there on the screen. And a checkered flag comes out from Big P. So we got three sessions left for the AFT singles to wrap up qualifying. We'll have an open paddock area. When that is all done, you can go to the pit area, meet the riders. And that is scheduled from 6 to 6.50, but it's going to be pushed back a little bit because we still have three groups left. But we'll get you in the pit area just as soon as we can. Also, there's a brand new fan experience. It's brand new this season. Yeah, I like this. You can go into the infield with Brian Smith. He's going to walk you around and look at the track. You get to go to that victory podium and take some pictures. You also get to go out there to that starting line if you want to take a picture out there. It's a little bit extra charge and we're gonna be doing that all season long and then they'll get to go to that corral in the middle of the racetrack to watch some of the heat races here tonight pretty cool opportunity I, you know if i was coming back tomorrow night which i know most of them are you can upgrade your ticket to get that fan experience well you better come back tomorrow night well you better too i'm well, i'm here trust well, me. well last year you stood me up on the second no, night know. yeah mm -hmm. i thought we were friends there was an opportunity for 25 bucks last there's year. there's the corral right there in there's the middle the corral 20 bucks 20 bucks 25 bucks oh 25 bucks to go to pensacola to okay yeah. all right 
Yeah, that's the corral if you get thrown in jail. But no, that's a good spot to watch the race. It's it's so different to see it when you're down there that closely oh, yeah. sitting in the grandstand. So upgrade your ticket for tomorrow night to that fan experience. All part of the show here at Progressive American Flat Track. Cody Kopp on the number one. Fifty nine right there on the screen. Tom Drain trying the bottom of the racetrack. Chase Saddle right there. You know what? It would surprise me if this isn't our podium finishers. Maybe not in that order even. It could be our podium finishers each and every round. Exactly. Very and again, true. Not in that order. They could mix these it up. three could mix it up all season well, long. Saddle still looking for his first win. You you pointed out last year, five races in a row, he got second within what four tenths of a second. It was the most one of the most ridiculous stats I'd ever heard. Yeah, it, and you found that for us. It was amazing. But he's at the top spot right now, one eight point three four zero. That's actually faster than his last round. And look, Cody Cop pulls out of the way and lets the eighty eight go. Now he jumps in behind him, and I think that's pretty smart. Cop wants to see exactly where he's running. And that was my fault the last time the Honda was on the track in 2002, not 2012. That was my fault. Okay. That was Nicky Hayden. Thanks, Bert. 88 out in front. Chase Sadoff, we're watching Cody Kopp, and there's the bomber. Tom Drain, the 59, the only single rider for the Estenson team. Now they're down to two riders, one in the Super Twins and one in the singles class. It's different out there with Chase with this, just that plain black helmet out there. I find that a little different, but uh, he says, I don't need to look fast. I know I'm fast. Check this out, Scotty. All right. The 88 back end is trying to come around. Look so is the one. All, all three of them. Oh, the back man. End, so the back end is trying to step on out. So they kind of have to use their body English check up just a little bit. But it happened to all three of them. So they're they're trying to get on the throttle as soon as they can. Maybe a little bit too soon right there. Or maybe grabbing a full handful. Maybe you need to roll it on just a little bit better. But, you know, these young guns, that doesn't slow them down at all. So. Right now, still Chase Sadoff is the man to beat. He's been fastest in practice, fastest in the first round, fastest so far in the second round. His quickest time of the day in this round, 18.340. He had a quicker time in that first round of practice of 18.143. That might be quick enough to take him the $5,000. There it is right there, the difference between first and second, 0.135. That is just this round. Petting up there, consistently running up there in the top four spots. Shane Texter is the 11th rider out there so far. So there's the top 10. Look at the different brands. Honda, KTM, Yamaha, and a Husqvarna back there with James Ott back in the seventh spot. He's on a team by himself this year. James Ott on the First Impressions race team. He's currently seventh. They didn't pick up an, oh, we got a rider down. They just went around him in turn one and two. In flat track, we race until we see a red or check. Oh, his legs yeah, up underneath there. The red here. Yeah, they should definitely bring that red out. That is the 66 of Logan Eyes already stuck underneath that motorcycle. That leg is stuck. Watch out, everybody. He said, help me. I hope that pipe is not laying on his leg. There's a lot of plastic on is. those 450s, yeah. but the red flag is Finally out. Finally the red. Yeah, somebody can go over there and help get that motorcycle like, uh, off That would be good. Yeah, help me out, please. Scotty, when well, we have a little bit of downtime, while they help him here. Yes, sir. That is actually uh, our paramedic helping out. I think he'd be happy to have anybody help him. Put at this your point. hands together for that 66 right there. Logan Eisenhard going down. Got Hanum's Harley Davidson on the leathers and on the side of that bike. Go ahead, Ralph. Um, it's an exciting time in this singles category because when you start to think about it, and this is just speculation, let's be very clear about that. We're just chatting amongst our friends here. Right. There's a lot of brands that are coming into this market meaning the 450 market and who knows what we could be seeing here brand wise in the next couple of years in our singles category well we saw triumph make it make an impression already in supercross the very first outing two riders making the main event in in, a, in the 250 supercross so i think the 450 as soon as they get 450 I've, somebody will try it Let's take a look at this first. Watch that front. I think you're going to oh, see. Oh, it's already it. down. He's, already, oh, he's down. already down. And then the bike lands right on top of his right leg. The good thing is 
You use your left left leg a lot more than you use that right leg, but he was trapped underneath there for quite a while. He's like, can I get some help over here? Oh, there, there it is. is. High-sided right there. The good thing is right there in the middle of the corner, that's probably the slowest point on the racetrack. Yeah, if there is he a good wasn't thing. back on the throttle yeah. probably hard yet. If there is a good thing about falling if off, there that, is, yeah. that would be it. So Triumph is one. You've got Ducati has announced their 450 now. They're and, up and running. And on Tuesday at the Amateur Day here, we had a Sherco make a few main events, and, and we haven't seen them in American Flat Track just yet. Hearing the word beta mentioned out there. We um, see gas gas. Gas gas. I mean, there's a lot of things, Scotty. It could be very, very interesting how different this category could look manufacturer-wise in the coming years. There's my favorite number right there, the 43. Jacob Vandekoy. They call him Kill Switch. That's Jared Vandekoy's little brother. His new number, 43. That was his amateur number when he grew up. He uh, Made some main events last year and lost the three-digit number, and 43 was open because James Raspoli has dedicated his season this year to the bagger class over there in road racing. So the 43 is now open, and now it's filled by kill switch. Jacob Vandekoy from Mount Gilead, Ohio, and he's on a Husqvarna as well. 43 currently sitting 20th quick, 19.222. He's chasing the 56 of Jordan Jean, who's currently 16th quick. So, and Kill Switch is actually starting to get a little bit taller. He just went through a growth spurt. He must be at least 16 to race here in Progressive American Flat Track. And we'll have another new singles rider in just a couple weeks. Braden Fanders turns 16 after we leave here. He will be racing in the AFT singles class when we go to Sonoya, Georgia in just a couple weeks. That's definitely a sight to look forward to. Some tremendous racing there last year. I just got a message. Will we ever see a beta in AFT? Well, we just mentioned that, that they're uh, another brand that's out there that people are starting to murmur about up throughout the paddock area, right? You wander through and you start talking to team owners and team managers and crew chiefs and stuff, and you're hearing these different brands mentioned. Boy, it'd be interesting to get a hold of one of these, or that could be a possibility. So, yeah, I don't know if Beta's coming, but what we can tell you is that people are talking about them. There you go. And, and you know what? These this manufacturers we've had for so long, you know, they may have certain riders that they help out. But if, if there's a new brand out there and you say you got a fifth-place rider looking for some help, maybe he can reach out to one of these other brands and say, hey, come on, let's let's go racing. Or even even a local dealership. Sure. You, know, you don't have to go directly to the, to the factory. Manufacturer, yeah, the no. manufacturer, exactly. So you never know. We'll see. So far, two groups are done here in our second round of qualifying for the AFT singles class. Parts Unlimited AFT singles presented by Kicker. Our friends with Kicker, Lauren's walking around, help to spread the word about oh, Kicker yeah. Performance Audio. Good it's always good to see always. him at the racetrack. This is group number three. This is our final group of qualifying. Then the pits will be open in just a moment for the open paddock area. And then we'll close at 6.50. Opening ceremonies is at 7 p.m. sharp. As the sun is still out here, but it's starting to set off behind the back straightaway. These are a lot of the new up and comers. There's the 265. That is Evan Renshaw, who moved onto the Turner Racing Honda team. Oh, man. That back end stood him straight up in the saddle. He's doing an excellent job, though, missing both bumps on the front straightaway. He's using that left foot out there, you know, with the, the balance. You know, motocrossers put their left foot way out front, and he almost was doing that right there for just a second. But the sooner you can pick it up, Ralph, and get it on that foot peg, put that traction on the rear wheel, you'll drive forward. Got to be moving forward at all times, Correct. right? Correct. I'm very impressed with the 131. Evan Kelleher, he's another Ooh. new rider, was number 31 as an amateur, and he had a good showing last night. He is chasing Renshaw right now, which he did a lot of his amateur career. Evan Kelleher jumps up to fifth on that last lap. I just said, I just thought that would look like a really strong lap for the 131. There's the 106, Reese Podor from Kansas. He had a good showing last night. Last night was just practice, but he looked very strong. Scotty, one of the cool things I'm seeing out here today is the new Kevlar suits. Yeah, it's different. You know, it looks like pajamas when you see I, it and when you touch it. And I was talking to Dan Bromley about it. He's wearing it. We'll try to get some looks at it later. Uh, one thing Bromley said is it's it's not as confining or restricting as leathers are. They can only run it 
on the short tracks like this. And it's probably cooler, honestly. You know, it's it's, said, it's it's a little bit warm out there, but I, I would. He yeah. said it's not exactly as breathable really? as you would think okay. it would be. It's not bad, but it's not as breathable as you would think. But it's the freedom of movement that's I, such a I, key. I, I guess I would want to know what it feels like when you slide into a corner. What does it feel like? Because you know, that's why they wear leathers to keep from getting a burn. You know, when you right. slide at however fast they're going on this short track and, and you know, with the rubber down, it tends to burn your your, your left butt cheek or your left hip. But uh, I would, I'd be interested to see what it felt like in a Kevlar suit. I just, I've never worn one. Checkered flag is out. That is going to be it for qualifying. The 265 just crossing right there. He will end up eighth in this final round of qualifying. Again, they'll go back and put all the results from round one and round number two, and that's how they'll get qualified into the heat races. So if you're here with us, the open paddock area is going to begin in just a moment. You can go down to the pits and meet your favorite rider, but at 6.50, they will ask that you leave the pit area. Opening ceremonies are at 7 o'clock. Opening ceremonies at 7 o'clock to 7. 20 we'll start our first heat race right after that so the open paddock area is happening right now from right now until 650 so it's about 40 minutes and have some fun down there in the pit area see what's going on back there stop by get something to eat or drink that's it for on track action for a little while again opening ceremonies coming up at seven o'clock open paddock areas right now go stretch your legs get something to eat or drink see what else is going on down there stop by if you go into the pit area the monster tent is set up see what they've got going on there's all kinds of things happening enjoy this beautiful weather out here at daytona